The story begins with a group of players battling a two-headed dragon as spectators go wild in the chat. Suddenly, Lysiel arrives and uses her skill Roulette of the Gods, which activates a random skill, resulting in the activation of Nike, the goddess of victory divine punishment, killing one of the dragon heads. The players then attack, while Merlin summons a flame dragon that breathes fire, vaporizing the second head. The players celebrate their victory over the twin-headed dragon lord of the labyrinth. The protagonist Hai Yin Wu is upset as he tries to negotiate for a higher payout for participating in the raid, but is rejected. Hai Yu tries to comfort him by pointing out that only 15 million out of 1.8 billion God Wars players can even make a living through raids. Hai Yin Wu reflects that compared to other games, God Wars does not have an auto-targeting system, making it a more challenging but also more advantageous game for growth. He thinks back on his past as a well-known pitcher who was forced to retire due to an injury and how his lack of talent has made him feel pitiful. Hai Yin Wu expressed his gratitude to Hai Yu and wished for him to succeed by putting in a lot of effort in leveling up. Hai Yu was pessimistic, pointing out that the game was already dominated by experienced players. Hai Yin Wu nodded in agreement. Hai Yu then asked Hai Yin Wu about his character, Midas, a mage character that he had been nurturing for five years and had spent all his savings on obtaining through a class card gacha. Hai Yin Wu pledged not to repeat the same mistake as it was his only way to earn money for his family. As Hai Yin Wu left, a truck nearly hit him, but a pole that the truck crashed into fell and electrocuted him as he lay on the ground. He cursed his lack of money and talent, but it turns out that this was the luckiest day of his life. In 2034, the highly anticipated virtual reality game, God Wars, was finally released. Its title indicated a conflict between gods, and within a few years of its launch, it had a significant impact on the sports, entertainment, and cultural landscape. The game amassed a massive user base of 1.8 billion players, and for some, playing God Wars became a source of income. Hai Yin Wu woke up in the hospital to find out he had only suffered a minor burn and could be discharged after paying the bill. He was frustrated as he had narrowly avoided a truck crash only to end up paying hospital bills when he was already short on money. When he arrived at home, he was unable to enter because his biometric data was unregistered. He swore to move when he had enough money and cursed the rental apartment. Hai Yin Wu's niece, Hai Ren, opened the door for him, and his brother, Ying Ti Wu, asked why he went to the hospital. Hai Yin Wu assured him that nothing was wrong, blaming the door for being broken but Tiwu informed him that the problem could not be with the system as the device used the same biometric algorithm as the God Wars capsules. This news made Hai Yin Wu anxious and he rushed to a capsule cafe. After discovering he was unable to log in, Hai Yin Wu tried to contact customer support, but his request was denied. This left him frustrated and confused as to why it wasn't working. He then remembered an accident he had recently experienced and wondered if that was the reason. Hai Yin Wu was determined not to quit playing the online game God Wars as he needed to provide for his family and make money. He turned to his friend Hai Yu for help in setting up a new character and used a leftover character creation card to create a new avatar named Midas. The items in the game were incredibly expensive due to high demand from players who wanted a convenient life in the virtual world. However, Hai Yin Wu knew it wouldn't be easy to make a name for himself as a seller of such items. He arrived at the first class selection, a type of lottery system, and remembered the large amount of money he spent to become a mage. Hai Yin Wu understood that in a game where everything is based on chance, one had to be either born wealthy or incredibly lucky to succeed. When he reviewed the available options, he felt discouraged until he spotted the Archmage class in the corner and wondered if he was seeing things. He chose the Archmage class and was informed that the War Dragon had accepted him as its 82nd follower. To his surprise, he saw that he had been granted the legendary rank of Archmage, a class that the third-ranked player in God Wars, Asmo, had spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to obtain. Overwhelmed by this unexpected turn of events, Hai Yin Wu decided to level up quickly and start raiding. As he began the tutorial, he came across a hidden quest to survive for 71 minutes, with the reward of a tutorial master title, which would increase all his stats by 10. Hai Yin Wu was amazed at the plus 10 all stats bonus, as players typically only received 5 points per level up. Despite playing God Wars for 5 years, he had never heard of the tutorial master title within the community, leading him to believe that this was information that had not been discovered yet. He decided to record the tutorial and take advantage of this valuable secret information, as it would fetch a high price in a game where the only way to obtain a good class was through either money or luck. 
the players were disheartened upon encountering the orcs, but were told that they were not meant to be defeated. Hyinwu, who had already studied the orcs' movements from his five years of playing, noticed an icon over the orcs' head and understood it was an aggression indicator. Many players were killed by the orcs, and some chose to die in order to skip the tutorial and enter the main game. Hyinwu realized that he could see the monster's status window and even the items they had, and felt confident in completing the hidden quest and earning the tutorial master title. After an hour of playing, Hyinwu was forcibly logged out due to his heart rate increasing too fast. He then watched a video of himself successfully completing the quest and was thrilled with his achievement. Haikyu walked up to Hyin Wu and asked him why he was sighing. Hyin Wu responded that he was feeling conflicted about having to start from scratch. Haikyu was unsure of what Hyin Wu meant by starting from scratch and asked if his account had been suspended. Hyin Wu didn't answer, appearing sad. Haikyu apologized, but Hyin Wu told him not to tell anyone else. He then went back to playing the game and decided to keep his reason for starting from scratch a secret. He was afraid that if the game developers found out about his unique ability, they might take action or others might target him. Hyin Wu believed that he had gained his ability as a result of the accident and saw it as a chance to improve his life and the lives of his brother and niece. Hyin Wu arrived in the town of Beginnings, still stunned that he was a legendary archmage, one of only a hundred in the world. He was on his way to the Explorer Guild when he spotted a golden light and approached it, thinking it was a quest. To his surprise, it turned out to be a legendary quest, one that he had only heard about in rumors. He accepted the quest, which required him to meet Hayden and acquire vitalizing resurrection medicine for a lost and sick puppy. Hyin Wu realized that if he didn't have the ability to view hidden information, he would have missed the quest like everyone else. The Explorer Guild manages most of the quests in the area, and while Hyin Wu didn't want to associate with them, he felt he had no choice in the matter. Despite the various quests available in God Wars, their generation rates became sparser as the rank increased, with limited opportunities to clear them, and NPCs could only give out a limited number of quests each day. As a result, players who received quests in advance to trade for in-game currency and those who created camps in front of NPCs to monopolize the quests appeared. The Explorer Guild was formed to tackle this issue. With the sheer number of NPCs in the game, it was impossible to manage them all, and there was no way to control other players. The solution was to head to the Town of Beginnings, a place created to help beginners adapt to the game, where once you left, you could never return, making it safe from veteran players looking for a fight. The developers declared they would not intervene with in-game matters, and the Explorer Guild became an official business. Upon arrival at the Explorer's Guild, Hyin Wu was informed about the three main types of courses offered. The basic course, which allowed for immediate access to a quest without any wait time, the advanced course, which provided not only a quest but also a loaner item service, and the luxury course, which offered support until the completion of the quest through a party formed with an Explorer Guild helper. Payment could be made using in-game currency such as gold and items, as well as dollars, yen, and euros. Hyin Wu chose the basic course. In the past, there were individuals who tried to cheat in the game God Wars by going against the Explorer Guild. However, it was rumored that they were caught and sent to the mines to work off their debt. The Explorer Guild even provided services to the wealthy and powerful in the real world, making it nearly impossible to escape their influence. The only way out was to abandon your in-game character. These were the parasites that had taken hold in God Wars. Hyin Wu received the quest list and a confirmation note, then went to meet with Hayden. He selected the hidden quest that was connected to the legendary quest. Hyin Wu was aware that he needed to deceive the Explorer Guild in order to receive all the remaining linked quests from them in secret. Hyin Wu easily defeated the goblins outside the game, even without using magic. A message appeared indicating that the deity he worshipped was taking notice of his progress and offered him a unique opportunity. In the game, players received these opportunities every time they reached a certain level, but they rarely resulted in anything useful. Despite feeling confident about his newfound luck, Hyin Wu was disappointed with the outcome of his opportunity. He was, however, relieved that he received an attack magic spell, the fireball skill. Hyin Wu went back to complete the quest and pretended to have had a difficult time with the goblins. He then pretended that an NPC had taken his quest item and complained to an Explorer Guild member. The member informed him that all responsibility was on the player. Hyin Wu made it clear that he could do what he wanted with the quest, and the member confirmed this. 
Hyun Woo smiled as he walked away, cursing, now with no obstacles in his way. He worked hard to obtain the quest item and submit it, receiving the medicine in return. He ran back to the puppy and gave it the medicine, hoping to receive a skill card as a reward. A message then appeared, informing him that the wolf was now his pet. Hyun Woo was then given the title master of a divine beast. He was disappointed when he realized that a divine beast in the game was unsellable and he couldn't profit from it. He picked up the wolf and was prompted to give it a name. He decided to name it Lucky. When he viewed its information, he was logged out due to his increased heart rate. His friends greeted him, but he walked away gloomily. One of them mentioned that Hyun Wu had been that way since his mage account was suspended. However, as Hyun Wu left he smiled and remembered that Lucky was actually Fenrir, the strongest divine beast in God Wars, that was unmatched in close combat. He was thrilled and knew that this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Suddenly, Hyun Wu received a call from Hyeran, who informed him that his brother was in the hospital. Hyun Wu rushed to the hospital and saw Hyeran crying. The doctor informed him that Tiwu's blood pressure had fallen because his heart functions were momentarily weakened, but reassured Hyun Wu that it was nothing serious for now. However, Tiwu had a pacemaker and needed to have it changed periodically, as well as go through rehabilitation. Hyun Wu was motivated to make money and was no longer going to hold back since he had acquired Fenrir. He planned to sell all the information and items he could find for money, but first he needed to strengthen his Archmage character. In the beginner's hunting ground, other players mistook Lucky, who was with Hyun Wu, as a puppy. Hyun Wu was able to obtain two things after completing the legendary quest. He no longer needed to find party members since he gained a companion who could distract the monsters and he now had the freedom to play solo. With a little more growth, he would be able to leave the town of beginning. The challenges would be greater, but the rewards would be equally substantial. Hyun Wu then opened a skill card that was sent by the War Dragon and discovered a unique rank skill card for telekinesis. This skill uses unseen physics to move objects in the air or to disrupt the opponent's movements in battle. It can only be learned by telekinetic mages, but that posed no problem for archmages who can learn all forms of magic. Hyun Wu was content. In the goblin forest, Lucky attacked a goblin, and then Hyun Wu used fireball on the remaining goblins. Lucky was proud and found the goblins to be too easy. Hyun Wu decided to venture deeper into the forest, where he stumbled upon a boss monster raid, the Flower of God Wars. The rewards from these raids were substantial and exceeded expectations, compared to killing regular field monsters. However, these boss monster raids were super difficult, and only the top rankers were eligible to participate. They were often compared to a star in the sky, visible to everyone, but only reachable by a select few. The benefits from participating in God Wars included not only the items obtained through the raid, but also the ability to broadcast a hunt live, which resulted in astronomical earnings. Hyun Wu realized he still had a long way to go if he wanted to become a ranker and was initially going to report his discovery to the community in exchange for money. However, he hesitated and decided to take on the challenge himself after considering his family. Having already watched videos of the Champion Goblins raids, Hyun Wu was familiar with its movements. He set a trap before the boss appeared and when the Champion Goblin rushed to attack, Hyun Wu stepped back and made the monster step on the trap and fall into the hole. Then he threw oil on the monster and used fireball. As the champion goblin attempted to climb out of the hole, it was attacked by Lucky. Its health decreased, causing its attack pattern to change, and it jumped out of the hole to attack Hyun Wu, but was intercepted by Lucky once again. Hyun Wu then finished off the monster with a fireball. He and Lucky celebrated as he received the title of champion goblin hunter. Hyun Wu regretfully realized he had not recorded the battle and missed out on the opportunity to earn money from it. They then noticed the drop from the champion goblin, which was the champion goblin mask. To Hyun Wu's surprise, he saw its high price, and though he wanted to wear it, he knew he had to sell it to cover his brother's medical bills and living expenses. Hyun Wu received a call from the insurance company about compensation for the electric shock, and he deposited the money into his account. The staff asked if he had acquired any valuable items, and it was revealed that Hyun Wu had told the insurance company that he suffered from anxiety after the accident, just thinking about trucks and poles. The insurance company told him he would be paid after confirming his medical visit, making Hyun Wu smile. Hyun Wu felt a twinge of guilt for accepting the insurance payout, but he needed the money for his family's expenses. So he focused on getting stronger in the game.
As he entered the goblin forest, the goblins tried to protect themselves from Hyin Wu's fireballs by using shields, but he used a different skill, Ice Arrow, to break through the shields and continue attacking. With Lucky by his side, he felt secure. They continued to explore the forest and hunt goblins, but Hyin Wu longed for a unique item, not just basic equipment. However, his hopes were shattered when he stumbled upon a PK, player kill, group, who was having fun capturing and killing other players. He heard a player scream as they were chased and killed by the PK group. The captured player threatened to tell their guild, but the PK group just laughed, saying they were using alternate characters, and due to the level restrictions, the player couldn't call for help. As the PK group harassed the player, Hai and Wu was watching them. They were known as civilian killers. They don't leave the town of beginning even after hitting level 12 and only massacre beginners with no experience. They're scums that waste time just because it's fun to torture others. But he realized that picking a fight with them at his current level would be a stupid thing to do. He turned to leave, but Lucky was angry. Hyin Wu then wondered if these players were stronger than the champion goblin. The PK group then saw more players and decided to attack, but he was hit with a fireball, surprising the other two PK players. Hyin Wu then arrived as he introduced himself as the Archmage streamer and bluffed the PK players that he was streaming. The other PK player was hit and was sent flying. The remaining PK player realized that Hyin Wu cast a fireball and now he's using an ice arrow. The only class that can handle two or more attributes is an Archmage and thought it was an alt of a rich guy. The PK player then tried to run away but was caught by Lucky. The PK player threatened Hyin Wu but didn't care and finished him off. After taking care of the PK players, Hyin Wu felt content and retrieved items from them. He obtained the champion goblin's armor and leather pants, unique items that activate a set effect when paired with the champion goblin's mask. Upon equipping the set items, he noticed a boost in all his stats by 25 points and an increase in damage to goblins by 10%. Upon checking his character information, he discovered that his intelligence had surpassed 100, something he only achieved after reaching level 15 with his previous character. Lucky howled and a message popped up indicating that Lucky had gained a new power. He was prompted to choose a skill for Lucky, and a legendary skill called Treasure Hunter appeared. This Divine Beast ability allowed them to sense rare treasures that were hidden. This reminded Hyin Wu of the man known as the luckiest player in God Wars, the guild master of immortals, Lapo, and his divine beast, Fenris Marty. Lapo's content mainly consisted of finding hidden dungeon items, and his luck was so good that it seemed almost fake. Hyin Wu speculated that this was due to the treasure hunter skill. Hyin Wu then put the treasure hunter skill to the test and found a large quantity of high-grade ingredients that could fetch a good price. Suddenly, Lucky stopped and approached a hole. They soon discovered that it was a hidden dungeon belonging to a goblin sorcerer, which was a surprising find as Hyin Wu had never heard of a hidden dungeon in the town of Beginning, and he was the first to uncover it. Initially, he thought he could earn a month's worth of living expenses by selling the information, but he changed his mind and decided to tackle the dungeon with Lucky. Inside, the sorcerer goblin was seated on his throne. Lucky attacked one of the goblins, while Hyin Wu used Fireball to attack two others and recorded the battle. Hyin Wu was in the middle of battling a goblin boss monster, knowing that its stamina was low, but that it could unleash powerful magic attacks with the help of its minions. He took advantage of the right moment and interrupted the boss's spell by stabbing it with a dagger. He was pleased with the damage he inflicted thanks to his high stats. The boss tried to jump back, but Hyin Wu's fireball hit it, reducing its hit points to a critical level. He aimed to finish the boss with that attack, but was surprised when the boss tried to cast another spell, only to be interrupted by Lucky. Hyin Wu then used a fireball skill to deliver the killing blow. The boss's corpse stood up and said, the war of gods will begin before turning to ashes, leaving Hyin Wu confused. He then noticed that the boss had dropped a unique crank sorcerer goblin staff, but was disappointed to find out that it was untradeable upon pickup. A message appeared, saying the main scenario section has been created, which caught his attention. He remembered the late scientist and game developer, Kim Min-Soo, who had created the perfect virtual reality world in the game God Wars. Kim had stated that his goal was simply to create a story, not to make money. Despite his passing, people had been searching for the story he wanted to tell through the game for the past five years, but it was Hyin Wu who finally stumbled upon the main scenario in the town of Beginning. He realized that few people had searched for the main scenario there because of the Explorer Guild, and someone else would have found it first if it weren't for his luck. 
determined to go through it with Lucky, he used the opportunity given by the War Dragon to acquire a legendary skill rank, Polymorph, which allowed him to transform into creatures he had hunted. In the town of Beginning, Hyin Wu was on the hunt for Yung, the NPC of the main scenario. Yung's house functioned like an instance dungeon, creating a separate area just for Hyin Wu and eliminating the need to keep an eye out for the Explorer Guild. Upon entering, Yung greeted Hyin Wu and he asked about the traces of the Nameless God, triggering the quest. Yung explained that the Nameless Gods were those who had lost in the War of Gods and were no longer considered gods, forgotten by the memories of people. Before losing all their power, it was said that they had left behind their legacy somewhere in the world. Yung asked Hyin Wu if he wanted to know about the traces of the Nameless God, and upon confirming, Yung shared that he had tried to find the traces himself for a long time, but had failed. He believed Hyin Wu would be different and gave him a ring, directing him to look for Sakhalin in Wiga City. Hyin Wu was excited to start the main scenario. Hyin Wu was asked by Yung if he was ready to leave the town, and he eagerly agreed. He was then transported to Wiga's town. As he explored, he realized that the ring Yung had given him was incredibly powerful and had set effects, including one with an item called Sakhalin's Ring. He couldn't help but wonder if he would receive more rewards like this as he progresses through the main scenario. Hyin Wu eventually stumbled upon Sakhalin's house and entered, but was immediately threatened by Sakhalin for trespassing. However, Hyin Wu showed her the ring given to him by Yung and cleared the quest. Sakhalin was unimpressed and told him that she wouldn't talk to someone who only caught goblins and that he needed to prove his worth. She then challenged him to hunt 10,000 orcs, and a message appeared saying that a new main scenario had been created. Despite feeling intimidated by the task, Hyin Wu accepted and was kicked out of the house. He realized that it would take a long time to hunt 10,000 monsters, but he checked the quest and saw that he needed to hunt orcs to recover a fragment of a nameless god, which left him feeling confused. As Hyin Wu observed a struggling party attempting to fight an orc, he realized that he needed to hunt orcs to acquire an item that it randomly drops. Since he was tasked by Sakhalin to catch 10,000 of them, this meant that the drop rate for the item was likely around 0.01%. However, since Hyin Wu had the ability to see all hidden information, he only needed to find the orc holding onto the fragment. Unfortunately, the orc was already being hunted by the party that arrived before him, and Hyin Wu didn't want to steal the monster from them. Suddenly, the party's tank was disconnected, leaving the remaining members in danger. Hyin Wu saw this as an opportunity to attack the orc and record the situation. He intercepted the charging orc with a fireball and stated that he found a party in danger. The party then asked for his help, and Hyin Wu reasoned that since they requested his aid, it was acceptable for him to attack and kill the orc. Hyin Wu and Lucky started the attack, dealing significant damage to the orc. Although the orc charged and attacked, Hyin Wu was able to dodge its attacks and finished it off with an ice arrow and a fireball. The party thanked him for his help, and Hyin Wu thought of obtaining his quest item. Typically, in God Wars, the unspoken rule is that those who attack a monster first get priority on its drops, leaving Hyin Wu with no priority to obtain the item. To avoid any potential conflict, Hyin Wu acted like he was streaming, Hyin Wu acted that the chat was telling him to loot the items from the orc. He replied that the party had priority and they allowed him to loot the items, reasoning that if it weren't for him, they would have been defeated. Hyin Wu thanked them and smiled and looted the items. As one of the party members asked for his streamer name and offered to promote him to his friends. Hyin Wu thought about his future streaming career and replied that his name was Archmage Streamer. Upon Hyin Wu's return to Sakhalin, he presented her with a quest item, completing the quest and earning him a level up and a skill card reward. He received a unique rank passive skill called Long Tosses that enhances his magic attack damage based on the distance between him and his target. Hyin Wu was pleased with the new skill and asked Sakhalin about the fragment. She explained that the trace of a nameless god was difficult to find because a barrier was set up to only allow former followers to approach the location. Hyin Wu speculated that they would have to disguise themselves as followers to pass through the barrier, and Sakhalin confirmed his assumption. She then gave him a ring made from a shard of a nameless god, which would enable him to bypass the altar barrier. A notification popped up indicating a new mission had surfaced in the main storyline. Hyin Wu was shocked with a legendary skill card reward. To earn a legendary skill card, Hyin Wu must locate a secret altar in the fishy forest. Lucky accompanied him and led him to the altar's entrance. Upon reviewing the dungeon's details, Hyin Wu discovered it was a legendary rank and required him to defeat the rotting orc. Knowing it would be a challenging fight, he opted to level up before returning. Hyin Wu found a solitary orc and eliminated it using ice arrow and fireball, thus leveling up. Players soon spread rumors of a mage who massacres orcs in the fishy forest, dubbing him the One Combo Man and speculating he had wealthy parents due to his impressive skills as an archmage. 
Meanwhile, Hyin Wu continued slaying orcs and defeated one that charged at him with a fireball, which helped him reach level 20. He accomplished this feat in only four days and was thrilled, reflecting that if it had happened five years ago, he would have surpassed the 10 great guilds. Upon checking his level up card, he hoped to acquire a legendary skill, but none had been useful since level 11. However, he was shocked to discover he received a legendary skill named Dragon's Dignity. It boosted the damage received by all targets within a specified range by 10%, with the range increasing based on the user's level. Hyin Wu believed that every player who joined him in battle would receive a 10% attack boost, making him more useful than an average player by simply participating in a raid. He then returned to the secret altar entrance, wore the ring given to him by Sakhalin, and opened the dungeon's gate. Accompanied by Lucky, they battled their way through 22 orcs before arriving at the boss room. Upon entering, Hyin Wu's stats decreased by 10%, and he realized the rotting orc was an undead monster. He cursed upon noticing the boss's high HP. Although it was slow but durable, Hyin Wu easily dodged its attacks, ran to create some distance, and began casting spells, noticing their little effect. He knew it would take a while to defeat the boss. After an exhausting battle, Hyin Wu and Lucky emerged victorious, earning multiple titles and a rune. He then decided to return and collect his rewards, Sakhalin was impressed that Hyin Wu finished the quest in a short time, and she then tossed a skill book to him. He tried to slow the quest's progress, but she continued to explain about the next quest. Hyin Wu recalled what happened after he killed the rotting orc, he was checking the effects of the title he got, but suddenly the boss's corpse stood up and talked about a weapon that can end the myth. Sakhalin assumed that Hyin Wu is interested in the weapon and promised to tell him if he did her a favor. He then received a main scenario quest requiring him to hunt the Slayer Orc. He accepted the quest. Upon seeing the Almighty class, he remembered the conference where Kim min Su was asked if there was an item above the legendary rank, and he replied that it could possibly exist. It wasn't an answer that inspired confidence, and after that interview, no one managed to find a mythic item, so it became a rumor. Hyin Wu felt cautious, and it will be bad if he revealed it to the public, as it may endanger him and his family. Outside the game, Hyin Wu was reading about the Slayer Orc. There are tricky conditions to defeat it, but it doesn't have a good reward. Despite that, so many people try and defeat it because within God Wars, the Slayer Orc is considered a trophy that one needs to be acknowledged as a rising rookie. Initially thinking it would be impossible to defeat the Slayer Orc alone, Hyin Wu considered finding a party, but ultimately decided to go with only his companion, Lucky. Upon logging in, he realized that he would have to reveal his identity if he looked for a party and didn't want to do so yet. He noticed that Lucky had the opportunity to evolve and gain new skills and stats after last hitting 444 monsters. Hyin Wu decided to evolve Lucky immediately, hoping this would aid in defeating the Slayer Orc. Hyin Wu began his search for orcs and decided to test out the legendary skill he received from Sakhalin, the Dragon's Eye which revealed the target's weak points and allowed for critical magic attacks when hit. By activating Dragon's Eye and using the Long Toss skill to maximize damage, he was able to instantly kill an orc with a fireball, earning a title and a rune. However, Lucky complained as he had wanted the last hit. Aikju noticed Hyin Wu's disappointment and tried to cheer him up by sharing rumors about the fishy forest, which seemed to have improved slightly. Hyin Wu wondered if his completion of the main scenario quest had influenced the world, but he worried that others might take notice and decided to focus on killing the Slayer Orc as soon as possible. After finishing the 444 kills, Lucky began to evolve, growing in size, and Hyin Wu was prompted to select a new power for him. During the celebration, Hyin Wu noticed a legendary skill that gave him confidence that he could defeat the Slayer Orc. Meanwhile, many players were waiting for the Slayer Orc to spawn, but upon spawning, they were informed that someone was attempting to solo it. At a party, it's important to follow certain rules, such as DPS not attacking until the tank has established aggro. However, if there was a skill that could forcefully take aggro mid-battle, such as Lucky's Mortal Kombat, it could be used to challenge the enemy and prevent them from attacking anyone except the user. During a fight with the Slayer Orc, Lucky used this skill to stop the Orc from attacking Hyin Wu, allowing him to deal maximum damage with Longshot and Dragon's Eye spells. The Phase 3 approaching, outside observers thought it was impossible to survive Slaughter Mode alone, but Hyin Wu continued to attack the Slayer Orc with fireballs, eventually turning the Orc Rat and ordering Lucky to run. The Slayer Orc attacked Lucky, but she was able to dodge and run away. The Slayer Orc pursued her but ended up being caught in a trap. Hyin Wu seized the opportunity and killed the Slayer Orc using a fireball, which resulted in him leveling up and receiving a title. He returned to Sakhalin and received a reward called Sakhalin's Ring, which boosted all of his stats by 20, increased his attack damage by 5, and enhanced his HP and MP regen speed by 25%.
however, the ring was untradeable. Hyun Wu was thrilled and showed Lucky his new reward. Sakhalin then proceeded to share a story about a mythical warrior who was feared by his enemies and respected by his allies due to his remarkable achievements in the War of the Gods. Despite his successes, he discovered that it was impossible to bring an end to the never-ending war. This realization led him to seek out the Almighty, a weapon that could kill a god and possibly end the war. Sakhalin asked Hyun Wu if he wanted to hear more about the story, to which he eagerly agreed. However, she asked him to defeat 1,000 zombies in the Cursed Forest before revealing the rest of the story. Upon seeing the quest details, Hyun Wu was shocked and couldn't believe what he was reading. He decided to log out and was informed by Hai Ju that he had received a call from his brother. Hyun Wu was worried something had happened, but it turned out to be a call from his niece, Hyun, informing him that she had won an award. Hyun Wu was thrilled and suggested they celebrate by having fried chicken for dinner. Hyun hesitated, knowing that they were short on money, but Hyun Wu insisted that they would buy everything instead. The following day, Haikyu informed Hyun Wu about a popular video featuring a wealthy player who had achieved a solo kill using overpowered equipment. Hyun Wu ridiculed such players and inquired about the creature that the individual had defeated, only to learn that it was the infamous Lair Orc. Despite his attempt to remain inconspicuous, he couldn't resist watching the video, which had an impressive number of views. In the Cursed Forest, Hyun Wu and Lucky hunted zombie orcs, and he had successfully slain 74 out of the 1000 required for his quest. They could have made more progress, but Lucky's tendency to get sidetracked by treasure slowed them down. During their hunt, Lucky discovered an NPC lying on the ground. The NPC, named Yashi, requested that Hyun Wu collect 100 curse traces from the zombies in exchange for a unique crank skill. Hyun Wu accepted the offer and continued to hunt the zombies, increasing his level and killing count to 200. He commended Lucky for her assistance and suggested they take a break, but Lucky suddenly sensed something and darted away. Upon encountering another NPC who tasked him to kill zombies in exchange for a rare skill card book, Hyun Wu found it odd that he hasn't run into any competitors despite obtaining two field quests. While the influence of the Explorer Guild in the area shouldn't be as strong as the town of beginning, Hyun Wu barely saw any Explorer Guild members on his way to the Cursed Forest. After turning in the quest in the city of Wiga, Hyun Wu received a Fire Elemental Mastery skill card that improves fire-type magic damage and casting time, he then opened the unique skill card book. Exiting the capsule, Hyun Wu felt delighted as he obtained the Ballista skill card, which enhances the damage of magic attacks if the user remains stationary and reduces the cooldown and casting time. He pondered whether to sell the skill card or not, as it complements well with Dragon's Eye and Long Toss. Meanwhile, Hyun Wu received numerous messages from buyers interested in purchasing the video of him killing the Slayer Orc. He was particularly surprised to receive a big offer from the Rising Star Channel, a rapidly growing channel that prioritizes quality over quantity and showcases the content of rising newcomers. With this offer, Hyun Wu realized he wouldn't have to worry about selling the Ballista Skill card. Ark Youngjun, the president of the Rising Star Channel, believes that Archmage Streamer's skills are not impressive, and he only managed to kill the Slayer Orc due to being overgeared with cheat skills and the Divine Beast, which must have cost a lot of money. He wonders why Archmage Streamer would spend so much money when he could have easily purchased a level up service from the Explorer Guild to level up safely. Young Jun questions why Archmage Streamer would put himself in danger to attempt a solo kill challenge when he could have taken an easier route. His conclusion is that Archmage Streamer is seeking attention. Someone that's so desperate for attention, they're willing to shill like crazy, got a premium, special offer from a well known channel of their size. Young Jun was certain the guy would accept and they will meet up for a meal, then he will bring up a business proposal to see how much money he spent. He assumes the guy was at least a multi-millionaire. They then received a reply from Archmage Streamer. The letter continued that they are reviewing the offer seriously. Young Ju then said to start and properly leech onto him. Ian Ju continued hunting zombies while using the ballista effect and easily killed the zombies and completed the quest. He returned to Sakhalin, and she asked what he thought while defeating the 1000 monsters, Hyun Wu answered that the reason behind the fishy smell in the fishy forest was the rotting orc at the nameless god's altar. So it made him think, what if the cursed forest is always under the influence of a nameless god, Sakhalin was satisfied and said his next task is to figure out why the forest is cursed, then gave him another quest from the main scenario. Hyun Wu was shocked as he didn't receive any reward, but when he was leaving she gave him a skill book. He opened it and received a unique crank skill double casting, allowing him to cast two spells simultaneously. Hyun Wu came out of the capsule and was informed by Hai Ju that people are going crazy in the market because of a double casting skill card and it was selling for $60,000 shocking Hyun Wu. After God Wars launched, it took quite a bit of time until prices were set for various items in-game. 
this was because there were so many different types of items. Skill cards were especially hard to put a value on, since it was hard to see their worth until research was finished on each skill's effect, but there were a few exceptions. Skills that were so obviously good. Ian Wu thought that if the double casting he got was tradable, he might have a hard time deciding. He then noticed a message. Meanwhile, Youngju was asked about the new video contract for the Archmage streamer. It said if you can send us a recording of you solo killing the ragged sorcerer, we want to buy it for $12,950. Youngju confirmed an order to send it and wondered about the chances of the Archmage to successfully solo kill it. The assistant said it was practically impossible. They predicted Archmage will accept and buy more items and estimated that he will be spending at least $50,000 on skills and items. Then they will have a relationship where they are willing to spend money for each other. Ian Wu entered the game and equipped the Slayer Orc set which cost him a lot. He also bought two skills, Lightning Bolt and Fire Spear. He was feeling bad for spending money on skills as he hugged Lucky, saying that they need to succeed, and thought the email he received was a test to see whether Archmage Streamer is a player worth investing in or not, and was certain this won't be a one-time event. Ian Wu sees it as a chance to become a star, and he was determined to solo skill it no matter what. Ian Wu saw members of the Explorer Guild, and they noticed Lucky beside him, and they assumed he was the Archmage Streamer. Hyun Wu then gave them a potion to relieve stress and said they taste like coffee, the two players were cautious as Hyun Wu insisted and thanked them for working hard. The other players noticed that Hyun Wu was talking to the explorer and assumed that the Archmage streamer is being carried, while the other player warned them not to mess with Hyun Wu as they may anger the explorer guild. Hyun Wu smiled as this was his intention so other players don't mess with him, but he knew this will only last for a week at best and needed to finish within that time. Meanwhile, a party was wiped out by monsters as they screamed. Using his lightning bolt and fire spear, Hyun Wu continued to dispatch zombie orcs with ease. He was pleased with his investment as the monsters were no match for his powerful attacks. However, he noticed that his mana consumption had skyrocketed due to the constant use of the double casting skill. As Lucky killed another monster, Hyun Wu suddenly reached level 30, which replenished his HP and MP. He felt slightly annoyed as he had just consumed a potion earlier. Nevertheless, he eagerly chose a skill from the reward for leveling up. In his disappointment, he received the unique skill strength, which he initially viewed as unremarkable. However, he soon realized that this skill simultaneously buffed both physical and magical abilities and also increased their range. Although not exactly what he had hoped for, he recognized the potential benefits of the skill. As a party hunted zombie orcs, one member asked if it was the only monster in the area. The archer confirmed that he had used the eagle eye skill to scan the surroundings and there was no more monster within a 50 meter radius. They began preparing to kill the monster but were surprised when it was suddenly hit by a fireball skill from beyond the expected range. Ian Wu was amazed by the long range attack, estimating that it had hit from around 80 meters away. He couldn't believe that the projectile magic range was affected by the strength skill and how compatible it was with other long range skills like long toss, dragon's eye, and ballista. It also increased Lucky's battle power. Ian Wu considered his new range of 100 meters, factoring in Lucky's battle capacity. He wondered if it was now too easy to solo the ragged sorcerer at his level. Ian Wu began recording and addressed the viewers, explaining that he had come to solo the ragged sorcerer. However, he felt that it wouldn't be very exciting if he simply defeated the enemy. Instead, he proposed a challenge of defeating the sorcerer without taking a single hit. Initiating his attack with the fire spear, Hyun Wu encountered the ragged sorcerer, who began to summon minions. Lucky effectively interrupted the sorcerer's skill casting, allowing Hyun Wu to use double casting to eliminate the minions. Hyun Wu then calculated the optimal range of 60 meters, utilizing ballista and long toss skills to unleash a powerful fireball on the sorcerer. Meanwhile, a group had been waiting for the perfect opportunity to steal the boss from Hyun Wu. They decided to attack when the Ragged Sorcerer entered the third phase and used its ultimate ability Zombie Assembly. This powerful skill gathered all the zombies in the area, focusing on the players who had attacked the Ragged Sorcerer. As the Ragged Sorcerer entered the third phase, Hyun Wu became aware that the zombies in the area were starting to converge and that a group of players were preparing to steal the boss from him. Addressing his viewers, Hyun Wu announced that he had a secret weapon to reveal his fifth magic spell. The waiting group was taken aback when Hyun Wu charged at the ragged sorcerer with an axe, killing it with no opportunity for them to launch a surprise attack. Addressing his viewers, Hyun Wu asked for their thoughts on his ultimate move going mad with an axe while under the effects of a strength buff. He proudly declared that he had successfully solo killed the ragged sorcerer. Expressing his gratitude, Hyun Wu thanked everyone for watching and gave a special shout out to the members of the Explorer Guild who had witnessed his victory.
Upon hearing that the Explorer Guild had been watching, the group who had intended to steal from Hai Inwu quickly fled the scene. Hai Inwu then returned to Sakhalin and presented her with a cursed stone. In exchange, she rewarded him with her staff, which greatly impressed him with its impressive stats. Sakhalin observed that the shard was rejecting her mana and asked Hai Inwu if he knew what that meant. Hai Inwu suggested that it might be because the shard had an owner. Sakhalin confirmed and explained that it meant the shard was still connected to its original owner. She instructed Hai Inwu to travel to the Dorito Mines and seek out the blacksmith, Zuga. Young Jun received a video from the BJ Archmage showcasing Hai Inwu's solo kill of the Ragged Sorcerer. He noted a statement from Hai Inwu in the video about wanting to see a good result, which he interpreted as a test for their group. Young Jun analyzed the video and compared it to a previous one featuring Hai Inwu's defeat of the Annihilator Orc. He observed that Hai Inwu had changed his item settings and added new skills, particularly the double casting skill which he considered significant. He also assumed that Hai Inwu was the one who purchased the skill from the market. He then ordered for the Annihilator Orc video to be re-edited with increased quality and more funds allocated for promotion. Herb believes that if their guest is someone with a wild nature, they should be treated in a similarly wild manner. Dorito Mines is a hunting field designed for mid-level players, specifically around level 40. However, since no field monster was created here, players must enter the instance dungeon that occurs periodically to level up. This creates a system where incompetent users unable to form a party will be left behind one by one. Even if they manage to find a party, there's a risk of exclusion if a six-man party finds a dungeon that only five can enter. This can be sorrowful, but at the same time, Dorito Mine serves as a testing ground to differentiate between the skilled players among the numerous users of God Wars. Ain Wu approached Zuga, introducing himself as an adventurer who had come to visit him by Lady Sakhalin's introduction. He explained that he needed to make a compass out of a cursed stone and had heard that Zuga could help him with it. Zuga was surprised to have a visitor and remarked on Sakhalin's unpleasant personality. Hain Wu laughed and clarified that he had not experienced any trouble with her. Zuga presented Hai Inwu with a necklace made of soul metal, a material only found in the area that responded to specific magic set by the owner. Though Hai Inwu assumed he would have to mine the metal himself, Zuga shook his head and instead requested that Hai Inwu clear the dungeon 111 times so he could safely mine the metal. Hai Inwu was annoyed but decided to take on the challenge, recording the runs as solo content. While in the dungeon, Hai Inwu buffed and gave potions to his companion, Lucky, who had an evolution quest requiring him to kill 99 higher level monsters. Hai Inwu was unsure if it was enough and kept his skill ready to assist Lucky. Lucky easily killed a kobold which relieved Hai Inwu, they continued their hunt. After a while, Lucky successfully completed his quest, he evolved, and Hai Inwu was asked to select Lucky's new powers, they obtained the legendary skill Extreme Speed. Providing a temporary boost to his attack power and speed. Outside the dungeon, players wondered what Hai Inwu was doing as he was hugging Lucky. Hai Inwu was happy as it only took Lucky 9 seconds to kill a kobold miner. Lucky then located a hidden dungeon, it was a unique ranked dungeon that will reward him with a unique skill card book. They then entered the dungeon as Hai Inwu carried Lucky. After an hour since the Annihilator video was uploaded, Young Jun was informed by one of his staff about something they had found. The staff member asked if Young Jun had commissioned it and proceeded to show him a comment left by Asmo on the video. Asmo was curious about the staff used by the BJ Archmage. Asmo is a wealthy man, known to be one of the princes of Saudi Arabia, with a personal fortune exceeding 1 trillion 1. He gained fame for his spending habits in God Wars, having spent a million dollars to obtain the Archmage class. This made him well known as the man who has spent the most money in the game, and he became a collector of various assets within it, pioneering the testing of their performance. Asmo frequently tries out new items and skills for fun on his personal stream, creating unboxing content videos. The assistant questioned the truthfulness of an item that Asmo had seen for the first time in God Wars. Young Jun replied that it was possible since there were many unexplored things in the game. However, what mattered was Asmo's comment, it's real. Young Jun questioned why someone as big as Asmo would casually leave a comment without purpose and suggested that Asmo's acquaintance or even BJ Archmage himself may have asked Asmo to verify the item's authenticity. Young Jun saw this as a business opportunity given the relationship between Asmo and BJ Archmage. Young Jun admitted that his previous theories about BJ Archmage were incorrect and that he was a much more significant figure than he had thought. He instructed his assistant to send another email to BJ Archmage, proposing a new video profit distribution ratio of six-fourths, with them receiving the smaller share. When the assistant expressed concern that this would leave them with almost nothing, Young Jun reassured him that BJ Archmage would likely bring them a new item that would make it all worth it. 
After exiting the capsule, Hai Yin Wu felt confident that he could complete the dungeon swiftly. Hai Ju informed him about the Annihilator Orc solo kill on the popular Rising Star channel, which was expected to surpass a million views. This news caught Hai Yin Wu off guard. Hai Ju also mentioned that Asmo had left a comment on the video, expressing surprise at the unfamiliar item used. At that moment, Hai Yin Wu came to the realization that he had made a mistake. The Ragged Sorcerer's Staff is a valuable reward that can be obtained from the Ragged Sorcerer's Base, a hidden dungeon found in God Wars. This dungeon is exclusively attempted by Yung Hai Wu, who receives the staff as a reward for completing the main scenario quest. Hai Yin Wu is feeling frustrated as he realizes that left clues for the main scenario quest someone must have reported it to Asmo. He suspects that a group is actively searching for the main scenario quest, and he feels certain that the Rising Star Channel will be interested in making a deal with him. Upon checking his phone, Hai Yin Wu was pleasantly surprised by the number of shares he received. He managed to calm himself down and convince himself that nobody knew about the main scenario quest yet. Even if they did, he was confident that no one would be able to catch up to him. He returned to the game and continued clearing the hidden dungeon, where he and Lucky faced the challenging boss Mole Dog. The boss constantly moved through holes, making it difficult to predict its attack pattern. However, Hai Yin Wu's ability to see where it would attack rendered its movements useless. He used an ice arrow to kill the Mole Dog and earned a unique card reward, which he used to pick the lightning shield. Hai Yin Wu knew that this would be useful to Lucky. He decided to acquire more buffer skills for his pets and then remembered the haste skill, which would enable him to attempt time attacks. Hai Yin Wu decided to purchase the haste skill, which summons a wind fairy to increase his movement speed. Although the skill was expensive and almost cost a month's worth of living expenses, Hai Yin Wu considered it as an investment for his future in the game. After buying and learning the skill, he prepared to enter the dungeon, determined to achieve a short solo time. The current record holder for the shortest solo time in the dungeon was Sasaki Kajiro, a legendary rank sword emperor and top 10 ranker in God Wars, who completed it in 4 minutes and 11 seconds. The record for the shortest solo time in the Dorito Mines dungeon had been set a long time ago by Sasaki Kajiro and still remained unbeaten. Despite not intending to break the record, Hai Yin Wu was determined to get close to it. He then used strength and haste buffs on his pet Lucky and gave him consumables that could increase his stats before starting to record. Hai Yin Wu announced that Lucky alone would attempt the time attack in the Dorito Mines dungeon. Lucky swiftly killed a kobold and continued his assault on the dungeon. When a kobold attacked Hai Yin Wu, he skillfully dodged the attack and allowed Lucky to deal with it. Hai Yin Wu was impressed with the clear speed and noticed that the dungeon was already cleared, yet the quick attack timer had not yet ended, which lasted for 5 minutes. Meanwhile, outside the game, Hai Ju had initially thought that Hai Yin Wu was unwell. However, Hai Yin Wu was simply excited because he had broken the record time and wondered how Rising Star would react to it. The assistant reported that the view and subscriber counts were doing well. However, Young Ju expressed concerns about casting the real and potentially upsetting BJ Archmage. The assistant suggested that giving more of the income would be a loss for them and a win for the BJ Archmage. Despite this, Young Ju was still worried about BJ Archmage's reaction. The assistant informed Youngju that BJ Archmage had already replied to their request. The assistant mentioned that there were two videos, one requested and the other seeming like a provocation. Hai Yin Wu came out of the capsule and wondered why there is no people around, he then saw them all looking at their phones, watching the video of him killing the ragged sorcerer. Hai Ju informed that the new video of BJ Archmage is trending, and Asmo commented again asking about the ring BJ Archmage was wearing. Making Hai Yin Wu worried as he knew Asmo is now paying attention to him. Hai Yin Wu is concerned about other players questioning where he is obtaining his items, particularly Asmo who has been commenting on his videos. He fears that the more attention he receives, the more risky his situation becomes. To avoid danger, Hai Yin Wu decides to leave his current location and head to the Dorito Mines. After logging into the game, Hai Yin Wu met with Zuga to complete the quest. Zuga had already finished creating the necklace by the time Sahalin arrived. Zuga called her over to add the missing piece, which turned out to be the cursed stone that Sahalin gave to him. With the cursed stone in place, the necklace began pointing northward. Zuga gave the completed necklace to Hai Yin Wu, who leveled up twice after finishing the quest. Hai Yin Wu decided to postpone opening the rewards and instead focused on finishing the quest. When he finally inspected the necklace's stats, he was shocked to find that it was not just a unique item, but was actually much better than a legendary item. Sahalin instructed Hai Yin Wu to follow the direction indicated by the necklace and uncover what was waiting for him there, regardless of any obstacles. Hai Yin Wu was given a new main scenario quest that required him to travel north to the swamp, and the reward for completing it was an untradeable legendary skill card book. This news surprised him.
Hyun Woo opened the skill card book and was overjoyed to find the Guardian skill card. Young Ju was informed that the video of Lucky's time attack had been finished editing. The assistant commented that the swordsman probably didn't realize that his record was broken by just one dog. Meanwhile, Young Ju asked about the expected number of views the video would receive. The assistant estimated that it would be at least 2 million. Young Ju was reviewing a section of the video where Hyun Woo discussed the item he used, which had generated curiosity among viewers. Young Ju predicted that the video would receive 10 million views. Hyun Woo received the exclusive Archmage skill called Guardian, which allowed a defeated monster to follow his commands. Asmo also possessed the same skill. Despite Hyun Woo's disbelief at receiving such a skill, he knew that its usage was limited due to its difficult conditions. The monster being turned into a guardian should not have a significantly higher level than the player, and defeating 100 monsters in a certain amount of time was required. As a result, boss mobs and large monsters that only appeared in small numbers were almost impossible to convert into a guardian. Asmo's guardian was famous because guardians could equip player items, even legendary ones. Asmo made his guardian wear legendary items that were typically rare for normal players to acquire. Ayin Wu made the decision to acquire a guardian and use it as a tank so that Lucky could focus on dealing damage. Initially, he had planned to use the Summon Golem skill, but found it to be too expensive. He then buffed himself with strength and haste before exiting the dungeon. Unbeknownst to him, three individuals were watching him, questioning why someone would pay so much just to follow him. They then mocked Ayin Wu as they believed he couldn't get away from them. However, they were surprised at Ayin Wu's speed and were unable to keep up with him. After some time, Hyun Woo and Lucky stopped, having lost the individuals following them. Hyun Woo attributed his speed to the cursed necklace, which allowed him to escape pursuit without worry. Hyun Woo patted Lucky and entered the swamp zone. On the Rising Star channel, people were watching the video of Lucky clearing the dungeon and breaking the time attack record, which surprised them. However, the video's last part caught their attention. Hyun Woo mentioned that he had used some items previously that might raise questions about their origin, so he had prepared some new ones. He also offered to reveal all the items he had used so far to anyone who recognized one of them. Asmo left a comment on the video, stating that he did not know about the new item mentioned by Hyun Woo. He advised Hyun Woo to just reveal all the items he had used without any conditions. But then he sponsored the video with $10,000. The people watching have mixed reactions to the video, with some people being amazed, while others believed it was scripted. Meanwhile, Hyun Woo sat down looking sick and went to the bathroom. But secretly he was excited after realizing how much money he had earned, he decided to use it to improve his content. Initially, he was considering buying the Golem summoning skill, but since he already had the Guardian skill, he wasn't in a hurry to get a tank. Instead, he debated whether to purchase a buff or a new spell. However, when he checked the price of the Golem summoning skill, he was surprised to see that it was being sold for a low price. Unfortunately, he was too late, as someone else had already purchased it. In the Rising Star office, Young Ju was reflecting on their contribution to the Archmage streamer. When asked, the assistant mentioned that they had produced and uploaded a video on their channel. However, Young Ju was concerned that this was not enough. He felt that the Archmage streamer was a significant figure in the industry, currently working on a scenario with Asmo, and that their company was simply a subcontractor that could be replaced at any time. Young Ju believed that in order to maintain their contract with the Archmage streamer, they needed to show a higher level of sincerity. They needed to do more than just produce and upload a video. When asked about his plans, Young Ju replied that they would be using bribes. The swamp hunting grounds are located north of the Dorito mines and are suitable for players who are at level 50 or higher. Many players struggle with this location due to the swamp and trees that are scattered throughout the entire map. The swamp is typically ankle deep, but it can sometimes be as deep as waist level, making it difficult for players to navigate. However, the slow movement effect also applies to the monsters in the area, which can make them easier to defeat. Ayin Wu knew that the environment is extremely advantageous for casters like him. He used Fireball to kill the lizardmen approaching him. He found it easy to hunt them because of their slow speed. He was also careful not to get his new equipment dirty, it was the ragged sorcerer robe and boots. Lucky also complained about the conditions as Ayin Wu comforted him. After a while they found the entrance to the hidden dungeon lizardman's nest. He needed to kill all of the lizardmen inside to clear the dungeon. Hyun Wu cursed when he saw the number of monsters he needed to kill. He decided to increase his strength first and get his guardian before taking on the dungeon. Hyun Wu killed 100 lizardmen and used the guardian skill. The lizardmen stood up and noticed a question mark on its head. He then realized that guardians have hidden quests as well. The quest that Hyun Wu discovered was called Manifestation of Loyalty, and it involved the guardian protecting its master from ordinary monsters for 33 minutes without moving. 
If the Guardian successfully completes the quest, its loyalty will increase to level 8. As a result, the Guardian's physical and combat skills will increase. Additionally, if the Guardian's loyalty increases to level 8, it will have the ability to engage in intimate conversations with its master. Ian Wu was surprised to discover that Guardians had a loyalty system, he then observed the Guardian fight a monster. And he became curious about how much stronger a Guardian could become if its loyalty increased. He ordered his Guardian to focus on defense and not attack while he and Lucky rested and observed. As the Guardian fought, Hyin Wu couldn't help but wonder if other players would ever discover the conditions for raising Guardian's loyalty if they just played normally. Hyin Wu realized that he was the first Archmage to learn about the loyalty system of the Guardian. After completing the loyalty quest, the Guardian reached level 8 and acquired a new skill. Hyin Wu commanded the Guardian to retreat, but it killed the Lizardman it was fighting instead. He was amazed at the difference in its performance with just one level increase. The Guardian then asked for a name, and Hyin Wu named him Gold. Gold was pleased and requested a new command to prove his superiority over Lucky. Ai Wu was happy that Gold could communicate at that level, and he realized that Gold would be able to perform more complex commands with increasing loyalty. He also found the Guardian's skill to be more useful than he had initially thought. While Lucky and Gold glared at each other. As Ai Wu pondered to himself, he questioned whether a close-range damage dealer with exceptional combat skills could serve as a tank. He considered the idea of forming a party with just three damage dealers and wished he had a golem skill to complete the team. He speculated that perhaps he could catch 2000 in just five hours, but he would need to purchase the golem skill first. Ian Wu was abruptly awakened by his niece Hyarin, telling him to eat breakfast, he then saw a notification that Rising Star had gifted him with a golem summoning skill card. Excited by this news, he immediately left, promising Hyarin that they would have chicken for dinner. After realizing that the BJ Archmage may have knowledge about the main scenario quest, the manager of the Abyss Guild, Emma, contemplated sending someone to kill him. She then suggested a player who would take on the job for a reward of $10,000 Sniper Lola of the Seven Star Love Federation. As Hyin Wu entered the game, he stared at the Golem summoning skill card in awe. He felt a sense of gratitude towards Rising Star for gifting him the skill, and he knew that if he wanted them to continue supporting him, he needed to exceed their expectations. He considered solo killing the jeweled alligator, but he realized that it wouldn't be enough. He needed to do it in the shortest time possible. But before that, he decided to finish the hidden dungeon quest first. As he entered the hidden dungeon, Hyin Wu began clearing out the monsters. After a while, he found himself with only one monster left to defeat. Reflecting on the situation, he realized that the hidden quest was increasing his stats at an incredible rate, particularly his strength stats, which were unusually high for a mage. Additionally, the summoned creatures helped to draw aggro away from him, allowing him to focus on long-range attacks. With this advantage, he could even target enemies from 100 meters away. After defeating the last monster, Hyin Wu gained confidence in solo killing the jeweled alligator, and his fireball skill increased in rank. He managed to defeat all the lizardmen in 8 hours and praised the golem, but Gold complained that Lucky kept stealing the monsters from them. The necklace then lead Hyin Wu to a location where he found a dragon egg and wondered if it was a new mythic creature. He picked up the egg, excited to finish the quest and received the legendary skill card book reward. Sniper Lola sees Hyin Wu approaching and comments that it's natural for hunters to return to the city eventually, no matter how well they hide on the hunting grounds. He notes that in order to return to the city of Uyghur, he must pass through a certain path. She also saw Hyin Wu accompanied by a beast and a guardian. She remarks that it's expected of a hunter who's worth $100,000. Using the legendary bow of Wega, the attacker fired an arrow at Hyin Wu. However, Gold intervened and blocked the attack. Despite the ambush, Hyin Wu remained calm and commented that a normal player would be flustered by an unexpected assassination attempt, but he had anticipated an attack. Lola was taken aback by Hyin Wu's ability to anticipate and block the attack. Undeterred, she prepared to launch another attack, confident that Hyin Wu's magic would not reach her. However, she was suddenly hit by a fireball that caught her off guard. Upon turning to face Hyin Wu, she found him to be gone. Attempting to retreat, she was hit by another attack, which depleted her HP down to 20%. Lola was surprised by Hyin Wu's impressive damage output. Lucky attacked and restrained her. Upon examining the attacker's ID, Hyin Wu recognized her as the sub-character of Seven Stars Alliance's sniper Lola. He remembered hunting with her on her previous account and wondered why she used an alternate account to track him down. Ian Wu realized that killing her could turn the powerful guild into his enemy. Ian Wu intervened and stopped Lucky and Gold from attacking. He then addressed her as Sniper Lola, which surprised her. She tried to deny it, but Ian Wu insisted and called out her character's name as Rail. 
Hai and Wu then remarked that he didn't anticipate that hiding his identity from the drunkard would be so troublesome. Lola, taken aback, wondered to herself if Hai and Wu knew the guildmaster. The Oni is the guildmaster of the Seven Stars Alliance. He is notorious and dangerous, deterring average players from approaching him. However, those close to him refer to him as drunkard. Hai and Wu accuses Lola of secretly receiving money from the guild to participate in PK part-time, which is against guild regulations. Lola knew she was in trouble and if Hai and Wu exposes her to the guild, she's finished. Lola apologizes and expresses her fear of being caught. Hai and Wu then reveals that he also does not want to be discovered by the Seven Stars Alliance and offers to cover for her. Lola is relieved. Hai and Wu requests something in return for sparing her life and Lola asks if he will really keep their encounter a secret. Hai and Wu assures her that he is trustworthy and will not reveal their meeting to anyone. She then offered her bow and sincerely apologized. After she left. Hai and Wu laughed nervously as his bluff worked as he only knows Dioni from the rumors he heard. But he was glad to have obtained the Uyghur bow, which is known to have the best performance among the Uyghur weapon set and starts at a minimum value of $40,000. Hai and Wu considered selling the Uyghur bow, but he didn't need the money and decided to use it instead. He acknowledged that mages don't typically use bows, but the fact that it was a Uyghur bow made him think differently. The Uyghur bow has a special skill called Guidance that allows the user to set the first attack and subsequently, all other attacks will automatically hit the target. However, Hai and Wu faced a problem as he couldn't use the Uyghur bow and cane simultaneously, which would be inconvenient for him to switch between weapons. To solve this problem, he used his telekinesis skill to float the weapons around him. As Hai and Wu and Lucky arrived in the city, they were quickly recognized by the crowd. However, they noticed that they were being escorted by NPC soldiers. Hai and Wu was surprised and wondered why Wiga, the ruler of the city, was looking for him. He speculated that it might be related to the main scenario and decided to make the most of the situation. He thought that he might be the only player who had ever been escorted by Wiga's soldiers and was curious about the rumors that would circulate. Upon entering Wiga's mansion, Hai and Wu and Lucky were greeted by Wiga and Sakhalin. Sakhalin asked about the dragon egg and Hai and Wu presented it to her, receiving the legendary skill card book as a reward. However, as Hai and Wu was about to hand over the egg to Sakhalin, Wiga intervened. Sakhalin questioned his involvement, but Wiga explained that he was impressed by Hai and Wu's abilities and felt it was unnecessary to rely on others when they had someone as capable as him. Hai and Wu expressed his gratitude for the recognition. Wiga then told Hai and Wu to continue the research on the dragon egg. Hai and Wu realized that Sakhalin had originally intended to keep the egg and research it herself, but Wiga wanted Hai and Wu to have it instead. This made Hai and Wu realize that even the NPCs had their own scenarios and plans. Hai and Wu replied confidently that he would not let Wiga down. However, Wiga remarked that Sakhalin didn't seem to trust him fully, so he suggested a test to see if Hai and Wu was capable of protecting the dragon egg. He instructed Hai and Wu to go to the marsh and kill its ruler as a test of his abilities. Hai and Wu received a main scenario quest that required him to kill the beechweld crocodile. And discovered a hidden reward of Wiga's white staff if he solo killed the monster. He was surprised by the reward. When asked if he was ready, he confidently agreed to proceed with the quest. Hai and Wu then opened the legendary skill card book and hoped to get the mana recovery skill. He saw the draconic mana skill which increases his mana recovery greatly and was pleased, but Lucky shook his head and pointed to another skill the draconic overheat. The booster skill that goes by the nickname draconic fever time, which is famous because of Asmo. He offered $1 million to anyone who could give him this skill on eBay, and although it has never been officially traded on the site, the skill became his trademark and one of the greatest skills for the Archmage class. It is unclear whether Asmo obtained the skill by purchasing it or by other means. The short and powerful skill was made for boss raids and requires a lot of mana recovery. Hai and Wu realized that even if he sold his house, he wouldn't be able to afford the draconic overheat skill. So he decided to choose this skill. Hai Ju informed Hai and Wu about BJ Archmage's quest, mentioning that he plans to take over the city and become its ruler. Hai and Wu, thinking to himself, preferred that people like Hai Ju spread rumors, but he was concerned about those who act on their thoughts. Strange powers had been targeting him, and he anticipated disturbances during his solo raid on the Bejeweled Crocodile. In the Rising Star office, Young Ju's assistant expressed concern that BJ Archmage was taking advantage of him by receiving two magic skills, including the Golem skill. However, Young Ju did not share the same sentiment, stating that there was a thin line between investing and being taken advantage of. The assistant suggested that BJ Archmage would not care about a small bribe, but Young Ju revealed that he had a scenario in mind. He anticipated that BJ Archmage was searching for something big and speculated that he would attempt to defeat the boss in the swamp. 
however, Youngju believed that BJ Archmage would live stream the event rather than sending footage, as he had gained enough attention. Youngju was notified that an email had been received from BJ Archmage, asking if he could live stream from their channel. Youngju was pleased that his prediction had been correct and gave a thumbs up. He then instructed his team to prepare for the live stream. Ian Wu was looking at the fire and wind arrow skill that he received from the Rising Star channel and recognized that they were supporting him as their main headliner. Thus, he believed that it was time to begin a live stream. Live streaming has been the most popular content since the release of God Wars. However, snipers could potentially interrupt and spoil the stream. As a result, boss raids were typically done off-stream, except for the top 10 guilds. These guilds would confront and punish snipers in front of tens of thousands of viewers as a means of deterring others from doing the same thing. Hyin Wu noticed that two people were following him since he entered the swamp and realized that there were many people trying to kill him. Despite this, he decided to continue on his quest and made up his mind to show them that they had nothing to gain by targeting him. All video content in God Wars can only be broadcast via Wars Tube. Most players had no issues with this, not because they had great affection for the game, but because it was very easy to broadcast via Wars Tube. Wars Tube and God Wars are very well connected, making it easy to start streaming with just one touch. Ian Wu accessed the Rising Star channel and saw that the chat was up with only three people present himself, the moderator, and a user named Watton, who introduced himself as the CEO of the Rising Star channel. Watton told Hyin Wu that he could start the stream whenever he was ready. Hyin Wu started the stream and was amazed by how quickly he reached 1,000 viewers. He introduced himself to the chat while they praised Lucky. Hyin Wu then announced his plan to take down the Beechweld Crocodile and beat the current record of 10 minutes and 32 seconds with his party of four. He was determined to make it a challenging and exciting stream. The chat expressed their doubts as they knew snipers will come and interrupt Hyin Wu during the battle, but he was already aware of a few people around him as he prepared for the fight. The beach willed crocodile is a boss with a body length over 10 meters and jewels on its back. It is also known as the stoplight due to the color change of its jewels during its phase changes. When you reduce his HP to 30%, the boss enters phase 2 and every minute the color of the jewel changes. When the jewel turns black, the boss activates his swamp dive skill, which is the most challenging phase, and you can't deal damage to him while he regenerates HP. Ian Wu knew that matching the timing of the color change and bursting it is the standard method. The boss emerges and Ian Wu activated the draconic overheat. After learning that Lola had failed, Emma speculated that Esmo might be sponsoring BJ Archmage and expressed surprise at how easily Lola was defeated. Emma then revealed that she had put a bounty on BJ Archmage's head and to keep tabs on him in order to limit his actions. She was then notified that BJ Archmage's live stream has started. The viewers were surprised when they witnessed Hyenwu employing the Draconic Overheat ability and Uyghur's bow. He initiated the Dragon's Eye skill, unleashed a fire arrow, and directed it towards the bejeweled crocodile. In the subsequent attack, he triggered the Ballista skill and launched a barrage of skills at the boss monster. The Golem then moved up and intercepted the boss. Although it was preferable to conserve mana and use it strategically in response to the boss's phase changes under normal circumstances, Hyenwo was aware that there were no other enemies present in the vicinity aside from the bejeweled crocodile. The players who had intended to attack Hyenwo were surprised to witness him inflicting significant damage to the boss single-handedly. A PK player speculated that Hyenwo might have deployed bodyguards among the PK criminals, which could explain why he had been using a significant amount of mana from the start. The player considered that Hyenwo's reputed wealth made this possibility even more likely. The PK players were taken aback when the jewels of the boss monster abruptly turned black, just one minute into the battle. Despite their surprise, they chose to bide their time, as they were wary of the possibility of being attacked by Hyenwa's bodyguards. Gold and Lucky launched an attack on the boss monster as the chat cheered them on. Meanwhile, Hyenwa continued to relentlessly assault the boss. He assessed that the remaining HP of the boss was at 23%, and noted that if it fell by an additional 3%, the fight would progress into the third phase. Hyun Wu also noticed that the PK players were scared and simply observed his actions while waiting for the right time. Hyun Wu speculated that the enemy would attack him when his skills were on cooldown and his mana was low. He shared his estimate with the viewers, predicting that he could defeat the boss in 7 minutes who only has 20% HP left. However, he decided to take his time and not rush the fight to avoid appearing heartless. Hyenwa initiated the attack and landed a hit on the boss. 
He mentioned that he would be satisfied with a 10-minute record as he didn't want to make the game less enjoyable for others. He further stated that there was only one person who could make more money than him in the game, and that was Asmo. While Hainwu was speaking, Asmo donated $1,000 which surprised him as he didn't expect Asmo to join. Hainwu acknowledged Asmo's presence as a new visitor and suggested changing the camera angle by zooming in. During the battle, the golem attacked the boss, causing it to enter its third phase. However, in retaliation, the boss attacked and killed the golem. Despite this setback, Hainwu remained calm and thought to himself that the golem's low rank made it unavoidable. He believed that he had handled the situation to the best of his ability, and although the battle was still close, everything was going according to plan. Hyanwo contemplated to himself that his original goal was to prevent any PKs from causing trouble. He realized that the best approach would be to strategize and create circumstances that would prevent them from fighting. The PK players were hesitant to engage in an attack because they feared that the boss might kill them. However, the boss singled out Hyanwo as its target but Lucky utilized his skills to divert its attention towards himself. Taking advantage of the situation, Hyanwo activated his Draconic Overheat ability and launched an attack on the boss. The boss was unable to withstand the assault and died before it could reach Lucky. As a result, Hyanwo completed his quest and leveled up, while the audience was content and the viewer count reached 30k. Asmo donated $10,000 causing a frenzy in the chat. The PK players suspected that Hyanwa and Asmo had planned the donation and decided to retreat to avoid embarrassment. Hyanwa contemplated on how to impress the president, and then disclosed that he will be broadcasting on the Rising Star channel later before ending the stream. The Rising Star office staff was delighted as they managed to attract 45k viewers. Young Ju was also content and comprehended Hyanwa's message that all future broadcasts would only be on the Rising Star channel. Young Ju contemplated that they have established a mutually beneficial relationship with BJ Archmage, which would result in a win-win situation. However, he realized that if they only focus on immediate profits, Hyanwa might not sustain the relationship in the long term. Therefore, he pondered on finding something that would appeal to Hyanwa's interests. The players in the city were engaged in a discussion about BJ Archmage when they noticed him heading towards Uyghur's mansion. Hyanwa was relieved that his plan has gone smoothly. However, he realized that a single mistake could have ruined everything, including the broadcast. Hyanwu addressed the crowd and expressed his gratitude for their support during the broadcast. He acknowledged that he had received several offers from various channels, but he clarified that, for the time being, he would exclusively broadcast and upload videos through the Rising Star channel. The crowd seemed uninterested as Hyanwu spoke. However, he already knew that they didn't come all the way there for that. Instead, his aim is to impress the president of the Rising Star Channel. Hyan will believe that expressing his respect for the company would help him establish a good relationship with the president, even if it didn't sound special. Hyan will address the crowd and hinted that he had something even more interesting to share. He revealed that he would soon be receiving a reward, which was Uyghur's white cane. This announcement confused the audience, as they were only aware of Uyghur's cane. Uyghur's cane is a highly valued item that is part of the Uyghur weapon set and is worth well over $30,000. It is considered a legendary item and is rarely available for purchase. As a result, average level mages can only dream to obtain it. Ion was stated that in God Wars, no one had ever seen the item before, making it its debut. He announced that he would be showcasing the item's performance and features through the Rising Star Channel. Emma asked Jackie if he had ever met Park Young Jun from the Rising Star Channel who was from the Wharton School. Jackie confirmed that he knew Park Young Jun as they were colleagues in Wharton School. Emma suggested that they approach Rising Star to dig up information about BJ Archmage, but Jackie hesitated and shared that Park Young Jun was different back in their Wharton School days. He explained that Park was exceptionally skilled at recognizing people's talents and had even sponsored the Archmage before he became famous. Therefore, approaching him ambiguously would not yield any information. Emma thought to herself that the Archmage must have some information about the scenario, but she needed to figure out how to extract it. She felt responsible for ensuring that BJ Archmage did not go on a rampage alone and that the scenario did not end up in the hands of someone who did not understand its value. She then called someone called Merlin and asked to meet up to talk about the situation. Wigga commended Hyanwa for defeating the boss by himself. Hyanwa learned from Wigga that Sakhalin had left everything to him and had gone home. 
Wega expressed his desire to give something to Hainwa, as he was the one who worked hard for the well-being of the city. As the city's ruler, Wega believed that it was only natural to give Hainwa what he deserved. Hainwa was thrilled when Wega offered him a reward for his hard work. However, he was confused when Wega handed him Weigar's cane instead of the expected white cane. Wega then transformed the appearance of the staff, turning it into Weigar's white cane. Hyan will learn that the cane could increase the number of spells he could cast simultaneously by one, making it a valuable tool for his future battles. Wega shared that he used to use the Weigar's white cane when he was a child and now, it belonged to Hyanwu because of the value he saw in him. He then asked Hyanwu if he would be willing to hear his request. Hyanwu agreed, stating that he would do anything for the city of Weigar. Hyanwu received a new quest from the main scenario category but decided to look into the details later. He instead focused on looking at the White Cane's ability to increase the number of spells he could cast and was delighted to confirm that it wasn't just an illusion. Hyan will realize that the option could overlap with his current skills, allowing him to triple cast spells if combined with his double casting skill. He also learned that the option was first discovered by Esmo in God Wars but was attached to a level 150 item, whereas Hyan will obtained it before reaching level 50. Hyun Wu excitedly contemplated the potential popularity his next video would receive with this new item. He then noticed that both Lucky and Gold have a quest. The Forest of Giants is a challenging hunting ground near the city of Wagar, characterized by dense, towering trees. The forest is considered the most difficult in the area, and those who complete the quest here are able to progress to the next location. As a result, it is also referred to as the Graduation Forest. Hyanwu knows that they will be leaving the city of Wagar after completing the quest in the Forest of Giants. The next destination is the Kingdom of Tunga, which is only accessible through warp magic. Once they leave, it will be challenging to return due to the balance system in place that prevents higher-level players from interfering with lower-level hunting grounds. Hyanwu wanted to be fully prepared as they may encounter high-level users once they arrive in the Kingdom of Tunga. Hyanwu felt relieved when Gold and Lucky's quest appeared before they used the warp, but his relief was short-lived as he discovered the conditions they had to fulfill to complete it. To finish the quest, Lucky had to slay 5,678 monsters that were above his level, and Gold had to hunt down 5,555 monsters, leaving Hyanwu feeling frustrated. Tgar is the boss monster of the Forest of Giants which appears as a medium-sized monster with a height of 3 to 4 meters it has the ability to camouflage itself as a normal tree, making it difficult to distinguish from its surroundings. Hyanwu expresses concern over catching 5,000 monsters, given the small population of medium-sized creatures, and the added pressure of a live stream about Weigar's white cane. Hyanwu decided to start the main quest, which involves finding Tamaru, and rewards him with a rare skill card book. As he walked he witnessed the party shoot a fruit down from a tree, only for the tree to suddenly come to life and attack them. Their tank struggles to fend off the attack, while the rest of the party complains about their dislike for the forest of giants. Hyanwu reflects that his ability to see hidden information is akin to a cheat, as it allows him to easily identify camouflaged gar trees, avoiding the fate of the party who was attacked by the tree. He realizes that his ability gives him a significant advantage in navigating the forest of giants. As Hyanwu continues on his quest to find Tamaru, an elf suddenly appears before him, introducing himself as Tamaru. Tamaru mentions that he has already heard of Hyanwu, and compliments him on his abilities, referencing Wagar as a talented individual. However, Hyanwu humbly dismisses Tamaru's praise, to which Tamaru reassures him that his ability to locate Tamaru amidst the dangers of the Forest of Giants is proof of his capabilities. Tamaru then gave him the rare skill book reward and told him to follow. As Hyanwu followed Tamaru, he obtained several titles, including one that was typically only available in higher-level areas. This particular title increased his intelligence by 15 points. Hyanwu was content with his progress and felt satisfied with the rewards he had received. Tamara asks Hyanwu if he knows about Tgars, to which Hyanwu responds that they are monsters that disguise themselves as trees. However, Tamaru explains that Tgars are not monsters disguised as trees, but rather, through some unknown and strange power, trees are turning into monsters. Additionally, Tamara mentions that variants of Tgars have begun to appear, which are splintered monsters that he has never seen before. Hyanwu realizes that this must be why the quest is called The Wild Forest.
and believes that the unknown power must refer to the power of the nameless god. Hyanwa asks Tamara how many Tkars there will be if a mutated Tkar splits, to which Tamaru explains that there was a case where it split into more than ten. However, he also mentions that the more a Tkar splits, the smaller it becomes and it is a troublesome task. Tamaru urges Hyanwa to take care of the mutated Tkars before their numbers increase, and informs him that over five hundred of them have been isolated within the inner areas of the forest. Hyanwa was assigned the main scenario quest to eradicate all the mutated Tkars in the wild forest region. He felt pleased as he hadn't anticipated that he could hunt down five thousand creatures with ease, and he accepted the quest happily. In the Rising Star office, the assistant informed CEO Park that they had purchased three of the mentioned skills. During the conversation, the assistant mentioned rumors circulating in the Secretary Association about the Abyss Guild investigating B.J. Archmage's background. Young Jun was surprised by this news and commented on how B.J. Archmage must be a bigger player than previously thought. Young Jun received a call from Jackie who asked about B.J. Archmage. Young Jun wondered if Jackie had joined the Abyss Guild, as it was the only reason for such a large guild to keep an eye on B.J. Archmage. However, he acknowledged that B.J. Archmage's actions were on a different level compared to other players, despite not being a member of any of the top ten guilds. Despite this, he carried the burden of being the talk of the town. Young Jun declined to provide any information and apologized, stating that it was private. He then ended the conversation by suggesting that they hang up. Young Jun speculated that since the Abyss Guild was resorting to contacting them to reach B.J. Archmage, it meant that they had no other means of communication with B.J. Archmage. He believed that B.J. Archmage had no intention of collaborating with any of the top ten guilds, which made him uneasy about letting go of such a big opportunity. When the assistant asked for his plan, Young Jun decided to send an email to B.J. Archmage offering a one-year contract for all his videos and live streams with a 9 to 1 profit distribution. Yukju and Hyanwa were engaged in a conversation when Hyanwa received a message that caught him by surprise. He quickly logged into the game and checked the three skills sent by Rising Star. Hyanwa noted that he received the same skills again but noticed that the email contained details that seemed to pressure him into revealing the true identity of Weigar's white cane. Realizing this, Hyanwa felt compelled to comply with the demand. Hyanwa began a live stream and thought to himself that Weigar's white cane was a unique item that had never before been seen in God Wars. He also contemplated using the cane to hunt a monster that had never been seen before in God Wars, and that this event would be streamed live as well. As the stream began, the chat was already buzzing with excitement. Hyanwa proceeded to reveal Weigar's white cane, and announced that he had come to keep his promise to showcase the item's attributes. He also mentioned that he had prepared a special monster to demonstrate the cane's capabilities. The monster chosen for the demonstration was Atgar, which initially received comments from the chat that it was a common monster. However, to everyone's surprise, the Tgar suddenly broke apart into multiple monsters. Hyanwa then informed the viewers that he would not be able to respond to chat messages for a while, as he would be focusing on casting skills. Hyanwa proceeded to cast three skills, which surprised the viewers. After successfully completing the attribute verification process, he asked if there was anything else that needed explaining. He then mentioned that since he had revealed all the attributes of the new weapon, he was thinking of ending the live stream. The viewers expressed their interest in seeing some mob hunting, which caused Hyanwa to reconsider ending the stream. He obliged the viewers and started attacking a splintered Tgar. As he continued the hunt, he received donations from the viewers. Hyanwa then thought to himself about the profit distribution of 9 to 1 and realized that he could keep all the income, so he should work hard on his live streams. He also decided to properly thank the president for this. After successfully killing a group of Gar, Hyanwood decided to end the stream, much to the disappointment of the viewers. He knew that continuing to hunt similar mobs would become repetitive and boring, so he decided to wrap up the stream. He promised to the viewers that he will show more hunting videos on the Rising Star channel and ended the stream. After the live stream ended, Young Jun suggested sending a message to Hyanwa to commend him on his excellent performance. The assistant then asked if Young Jun had anticipated the content of the live stream, which featured a new weapon and a new monster. Young Jun confirmed that he had predicted the content, which was why he had offered Hyanwa a 9 to 1 profit distribution. Young Jun weighed the potential of Hyanwa and how he saw him as a real talent with the ability to become a brilliant star, especially since the Abyss Guild was interested in him. When asked about why the live stream ended early, Young Jun explained that Hyanwa ended it because Asmo didn't show up, and there was no need to prolong the stream without anyone to spice things up. 
he expressed the need to edit the stream and move on, as they would be sharing their joy and sorrow with B.J. Archmage for the next year. As Hai and Wu continued hunting monsters, the people are engaged in a discussion about B.J. Archmage's recent stream. Hai and Wu pondered whether the stream had caused any reactions, considering how popular it had become. He assumed that even the top guilds must be feeling nervous about it, and that more PKs were being sent out than before. While Hai and Wu was engaged in combat and slaying a monster, he noticed that his pet, Gold, had completed a quest, which had increased its loyalty and also granted it a new ability. Hai and Wu immediately directed Gold's attention back to the battle, and at the same time, Lucky also charged forward to join in. With Hai and Wu casting a lightning bolt and Lucky dealing the finishing blow, they successfully defeated the monster, which also completed Lucky's evolution quest. While Hai and Wu leveled up to 50 and received a skill card book, excitement filled Hai and Wu as he prepared to unlock three new skills for himself and his companions. Starting with gold, he successfully obtained the giantization skill, which allowed him to enlarge his body and enhance his attack and defense capabilities. Hai and Wu knew that this skill was usually reserved for top class tanks and suggested that gold may be the only guardian with this skill. Hai and Wu realized that not only was giantization a valuable skill, but loyalty was also a crucial aspect for guardians. He acknowledged that this information was unique and only known to him in God Wars. Hai and Wu then considered the potential impact of revealing this information through a broadcast, as he believed that it would cause the number of views to skyrocket. Hai and Wu proceeded to choose a skill for Lucky and successfully obtained Cheers of War, also known as the War Howling skill. This skill had gained notoriety in the God Wars community after being used in a fierce skill battle as a large-scale buff that improved the stats of all party members. The owner of the legendary beast Smarty, Rappo of the Immortal Guild, was the first to unveil this skill during the battle, which resulted in an overwhelming victory for his guild. Hyan Wu couldn't help but feel satisfied with how smoothly everything was going. He thought to himself that a legendary card might even come out for him with this kind of luck. Hyan Wu cheered to the possibility of three legendary cards in a row. Hyan Wu opened a skill book and saw a unique skill called Fire Step that burns the ground where he steps. He thinks it would be useful against PK players, but it consumes too much mana and he can't use it yet because he still relies on mana potions for recovery. He realizes he needs a mana recovery skill and is willing to spend money on auctions to acquire one. He then saw Tamaru arrive which praised him for exterminating all the mutated Tgars and gave him a unique skill book as a reward. Hyun Wu is excited about the possibility of getting a unique grade skill card, but decides not to get his hopes up too high. He knows that even though he can see the content of the cards, the skill card he gets from a skill book is still randomly selected. Upon opening the skill book, Hyun discovered the mana recovery field skill which reduces mana consumption as long as the user is not moving. Excitedly, Hywin realized that this was the perfect skill for him, as it would allow him to continuously use his attack skills without worrying about running out of mana. He noted that it worked under the same conditions as the Ballista skill, and declared it to be the most efficient skill for his needs. After acquiring the skill, Tamaru informed Hyunwa that he noticed something unusual in the surrounding area. Hyunwa guessed that Tamaru wanted him to catch a boss monster. However, Tamaru clarified that he was referring to a strange transformation that had taken place in the Viltri. Hyunwo was surprised by this request since the Viltri was a significant and imposing tree in the forest. He doubted his ability to catch such a powerful monster at his current level. Nonetheless, Tamaru revealed that he needed Hyunwo's help to eliminate the mutated Viltgar. Hyunwo was given the main scenario quest to destroy Viltgar, a mutated Viltri. However, he was doubtful of his abilities as he was only at level 50 and the size of Vildgar required at least a party of 10 pro-level players. He thought to himself that without his chi grade ability, he would not be able to handle this alone. Hyun was considering whether the mana recovery field skill will allow him to worry less about mana. However, he realizes that he will still need mana recovery potions and the money to buy them. While walking outside, Hyun Wu realizes that he has been spending too much money recently and his preparation budget is insufficient. He contemplates taking out loans to buy items but feels it is wrong. He also understands that he cannot keep postponing the live broadcast day after day. Hyun Wu receives a message from the Rising Star channel reminding him of settlement day and is surprised to see that he received $25,000. He plans to send a thank you email to the channel, but while walking, he accidentally bumps into a woman causing her to fall over. 
The woman becomes panicked when her cap falls off, and as she tries to retrieve it, her hand touches Hyenwa's when he also reaches for his phone. She then hurriedly put her cap back on and left. And he wondered if she saw the content of the mail. Lee Seol is always indoors due to social anxiety and spends most of her time playing games. However, in the game God Wars, she is known as the Muse of the Abyss Guild and is praised, making her feel like she is living a different life. The game has become a second reality for her. Upon logging into the game, Merlin informs Lee Seol that Emma wants the members of the Abyss Guild to keep a close eye on B.J. Archmage who is considered a dangerous person and a threat to the guild's survival. Lee Seol thinks to herself that if even Emma is talking about him, then he must be truly dangerous. In the Rising Star office, the assistant comments on the unprecedented profits even after settlement with the players under contract. Young Jun suggests going out for a company dinner, which excites the staff. However, the atmosphere changes when the assistant informs them of a message from B.J. Archmage, thanking them for the settlement. Young Jun emphasizes the significance of B.J. Archmage's message, as he possesses rare items and hunts monsters that even the top guilds have never encountered. He decides to bring in the video production team to document this event on a larger scale, and the staff is asked to work overtime. The company dinner is postponed for later. People were discussing B.J. Archmage's new video and were surprised by the high-quality production. Meanwhile, Hyunwo was also watching the video and had some thoughts to himself. He found it strange that the video was uploaded earlier than announced, and wondered if this was a tactic to urge him to show his own preparations sooner. Hyun will realize that if he was going to go on a raid, he would need to spend a significant amount of money on potions, which caused him some concern. He then saw Asmo's comment on BJ Archmage's video. Asmo mentioned that he was unable to watch the previous live stream due to being busy and urged BJ Archmage to do another broadcast soon so that he could watch it. Asmo also promised to make it worth B.J. Archmage's while. Hyunwoo was taken by surprise, prompting him to log into the game immediately. Upon entering the berserk forest, he estimated the distance between himself and the Biltriant as it began to move. Excited by the prospect of encountering a massive monster, Hyunwoo reminisced about his past experience with such creatures. Although he acknowledged the Biltriant's impressive HP, he also noted that its size affected its movement speed which he expected to work in his favor during combat. Hyunwo observed that the Biltrian had three phases, a common characteristic of boss monsters. He noted that the creature had a self-destruct mechanism triggered when its HP falls below 10%. After getting ready, Hyunwo began his live stream. He announced his intention to defeat the new boss monster, Biltrian, and showed the boss monster to the viewers. The viewers were surprised by the monster's size and some of them doubted if Hyunwo could kill it. Hyunwu consumed potions that boosted his stats and activated a mana recovery field. He attacked the boss by throwing various skills, such as fireballs, ice balls, and lightning balls, which surprised his viewers with his range. As the battle dragged on, Hyunwu eventually ran out of mana and had to drink a potion. He expressed his frustration about the lack of mana in mage class characters, regardless of the game they played. The boss started closing in on him. Lucky then used his skill which diverted the boss's attention toward him. This caused the boss to enter its second phase, where its branches transformed into trance. Despite the viewer's concern about the situation, Gold arrived to protect Hyunwu from the trance. Hyunwu ordered Gold to use his gigantification skill, allowing him to grow in size and strength. Asmo joined the live stream and donated a large sum of money, expressing surprise that guardians could use a skill. Hyunwu continued to unleash a barrage of skills on the boss. Hyunwu noticed that the excitement level of the live stream had increased significantly, and suggested that it was time to take things up a notch. Asmo responded by making another $10,000 donation and commented that he would donate more if the entertainment continued. Hyunwu asked Lucky to come over, which confused the viewers. Meanwhile, Asmo made another donation of $1,000 and commented on the talkative nature of Hyunwu's guardian. Hyunwu acknowledged Asmo's comment. The boss monster made its way to Hyunwu, who took out an axe and prepared to use it to finish the boss. However, the boss suddenly triggered its self-destruct mechanism. Hyunwu survived the explosion, thanks to Gold, who blocked the damage. Disappointed, Hyunwu expressed his frustration at not being able to finish off the boss with his planned physical magic. Hyunwu believed that everything went according to plan. He assumed that no one would suspect that he had prior knowledge about the boss's self-destruct mechanism. 
After completing the quests, Hyun Will leveled up twice. He noticed that the number of viewers had reached 120,000 and decided to wrap up the stream. Hyun Will thanked the viewers for watching, acknowledging that the climax may have been a bit underwhelming. Asmo commented that it was still worth watching and donated $20,000. Merlin and Emma, members of the Abyss Guild, discussed their current situation. Merlin expressed his concerns about their progress, while Emma disagreed and believed that things had become easier for them. She explained that Archmage Streamer had made himself a trophy by exposing his weaknesses on his live stream, which could instantly grant anyone fame by hunting him down. Additionally, Archmage Streamer lacked mana and was not under the Explorer Guild's VIP Protection Service. Emma suggested that they aim for an opening to get a lead on the scenario from him. Merlin agreed and proposed that they prepare their guild members by starting new characters and catching up to Archmage Streamer from level 1. Emma trusted that the Abyss Guild's authority and financial power would make it possible for them to prepare a class that's proportionate to the Archmage class. After successfully killing the Biltriant, Hyanwo acknowledged that he would not have succeeded without the help of Lucky and Gold. He then checked the titles and rewards that he received for completing the main quest. Hyanwo was pleased to see that the Biltrian Hunter title gave him a bonus to all stats by 20 points, while the other title gave him an additional 29 points to his health. He expected to receive many items for defeating such a massive boss monster. Hyanwo opened his inventory and was disappointed to see that he only received two items. The items were the Biltrian's treasure, and he wondered if he had missed any other items during the battle. Hyanwu couldn't help but feel disappointed, considering the size of the monster he had taken down, which was also ranked as unique. Despite his disappointment at the number of items received for defeating the Biltriant, Hyanwu opened one of the Biltrian's treasures and obtained a Biltrian root staff. However, he immediately expressed his disinterest in the item and remarked to himself that it was not valuable to him. Hyanwu's primary concern was finding items that he could exchange or trade to earn money, which he could use to buy food. Upon discovering that the Biltrian root staff was tradable, Hyanwu initially considered selling the item. However, his decision was influenced when he saw the options that increased mana regeneration amount and speed, which surprised him. Suddenly, Tamru arrived and expressed surprise that Hyanwu was able to defeat the mutant. Hyanwu then hid the staff and reminded himself to remain focused on finishing the main quest. He was more interested in the legendary ranked reward that he would receive for completing the main quest, as he had invested a lot of time and effort into it. As Hyanwa anticipated the reward for completing the main quest, he was suddenly ambushed by the nameless god's power. This surprised Tamaru. Hyanwa felt immense pressure from the attack, which was unlike anything he had experienced in God Wars. He was surprised that a game over screen had not appeared yet. However, he soon realized that his HP was decreasing rapidly and started to panic, fearing that he would die in the game. Just as Hyanwu feared for his life, the dragon egg that he possessed suddenly shone and absorbed the nameless god's power. Hyanwu was amazed as he saw the hatching progress of the egg increase by 3%. Tamra noticed the egg's reaction and expressed surprise, as he was not aware that Hyanwu was in possession of such an item. He advised Hyanwu to speak about it in detail with Sir Wiga who was waiting outside. After exiting the berserk forest, Hyanwu was greeted by Wiga who noticed the seriousness of his expression. Hyanwu revealed that he had taken down the mutated Biltree but was then ambushed by the power of the nameless god, which attempted to kill him. He attributed his survival to an egg, which he believed was designed to prevent players from jumping into the game without completing the necessary quests. Wiga informed Hyanwu that he had received a letter from Tuna Kingdom, where similar incidents had occurred. Mutant monsters had appeared, and the power of the nameless god had emerged, ambushing people. Those who had confronted the power had all died, but Hyanwu was still alive. Wiga requested that Hyanwu investigate the situation in Tuna Kingdom, and someone would come to find him once he arrived. Wiga rewarded Hyanwu with a legendary skill card book after requesting him to investigate the situation in Tuna Kingdom. Hyanwu also received the main quest scenario which required him to meet the person who had sent the letter from Tuna Kingdom. After receiving the rewards, Hyanwu opened the treasure of the Biltrians. He had already received a staff from the first treasure, which had a normal stat, but excellent mana regeneration effects. He believed that using the staff alongside the mana recovery shield would solve the problem of running out of mana. He also noted that telekinesis made switching between the two items easy. 
Hyun Woo believed that the unique staff he had received from the Biltriant's treasure was valuable and should sell for a price similar to a legendary ranked item. He had already chosen a staff from the first treasure and was contemplating what weapon he should choose next. Hyun Woo considered the monsters he would face in Tuna Kingdom and realized they were centaurs. He thought about swapping his guardian's appearance and skills with those of a centaur and equipping it with a spear. Hyunwood decided to choose the spear as his next weapon and planned to start a live stream showcasing never-seen-before weapons. After advertising the weapons, he planned to put them up for auction. Hyunwood then took out the legendary skill card book and hoped to get the Draconic Mana skill. Upon opening the book, he was ecstatic to see the Draconic Mana skill card and was overjoyed at his good fortune. Gold asked Hyunwood about their next destination. Hyunwood responded by saying that they were not going to another hunting ground. He explained that the maximum level in Tuna Castle was 100 and that if he warped there with his level 50 body, he would be attacked by level 100 players. Therefore, he believed it would be foolish to go there at this point. He planned to take advantage of the current hunting ground as much as possible. Hyunwa reflected on the events of the past few days outside of the game. He remembered getting the mana recovery field, draconic mana, Biltrian root staff, cursed necklace, and Sakhalin's ring. He thought to himself that his mana regeneration was so incredible that it was hard to run out of mana. Hyunwu heard Hyukju's voice and listened as he spoke about obtaining information through a special route. According to Hyukju, the top ten guilds had all partnered together and placed a bounty on Archmage Streamer's head. However, people were skeptical about his claim. Hyukju insisted that he was telling the truth and that the reward for recording oneself killing Archmage Streamer by PK was $100,000 with no exceptions. Hyunwu was shocked and even spat out his drink upon hearing this news. Hyukju claimed that this had happened because Archmage Streamer had provoked the guilds by saying something along the lines of, Give me your best shot. Hyunwu is frustrated and confused about rumors that he provoked the top ten guilds, and suspects that his acquaintance, Hyukju, may be behind it. His thoughts are interrupted by a phone call from his brother, Taewoo, who asks about his well-being. Hyunwoo reassures his brother that he is eating well and advises him to focus on his own health instead of worrying about him. Hyunwoo reflects that he has been too absorbed in streaming and completing quests, and realizes that he hasn't spent much time with Hyun and his brother, Taewoo. He tells Taewoo that he received his paycheck and offers to buy Hyun anything she wants with the money he earned legally. He also promises to return home early in the afternoon. Hyunwoo entered a store and attempted to ignore the rumors that were circulating about him. As he walked, he accidentally bumped into a woman, causing his phone to fall and break. The woman apologized, and they recognized each other from a previous encounter. Hyukju laughed when he heard the story of how Hyunwoo's phone broke, but Hyunwoo explained that they had already talked and reached a settlement. Hyunwoo also mentioned that it was the woman's fault this time. Hyukju teases Hyunwoo about running into the same woman twice, saying that it must be destiny. Hyunwoo disagrees, saying he's just unlucky. Hyukju then brings up the fact that they exchange numbers, but Hyunwoo shuts him down, stating that his phone screen is more important than any potential romance. Hyukju informs Hyunwoo about new information related to Archmage Streamer and the top 10 guilds, revealing that they are preparing for a face-off. He mentions that Archmage Streamer is farming non-stop at the Forest of Giants for the upcoming battle. Hyunwoo seems uninterested in the news and questions where Hyukju is getting his information from. In the Rising Star office, Young Jun discusses the upcoming face-off between the top ten guilds and Archmage Streamer with his assistant. The assistant questions whether the rumor is true, but Young Jun insists that it will become the truth, as Archmage Streamer has no intention of staying on friendly terms with the guilds. Young Jun believes that Archmage Streamer wants the guilds to become hostile towards him in order to increase his viewership. He predicts a conflict between Archmage Streamer and the guilds in the next area, Tuna Kingdom and acknowledges that they will have to pay a price to be a part of the action. However, the assistant doubts that Archmage Streamer will use the majority of the skills they are offering him and questions whether it will mean anything to him. Young Jun shows something to his assistant and suggests that a person who is driving recklessly needs additional airbags. Hyunwoo hunted trance with Lucky and Gold until he reached level 60 and equipped the Black Trance set which boosted his stats and damage. He also gave the same set to Gold, making Lucky jealous. Hyunwoo then acquired a skill card book from leveling up and obtained the Recycle skill, which he had never seen before. Hyunwoo understood the new skill called Recycle, which had the ability to recover HP by consuming MP or recover MP by losing HP. 
he questioned the usefulness of the skill in comparison to healing spells or buying a new shield-type skill. He considered the possibility of using the mana shield as his mana was overflowing, which could potentially offer better defensive capabilities than his current lightning shield. He also noted that as an archmage, he had the ability to learn any spell that was available. Mana shield was described as a skill that creates a protective shield using mana, with each hit on the shield consuming mana. Hyanwa pondered the idea of combining the recycle skill with the mana shield, as it would not only absorb damage but also potentially recover his health. However, he noted that the mana shield skill card was quite expensive, costing over $15,000, which presented a challenge. Hyanwa logged out of the game and logged back in to check the mana shield skills sent by Rising Star. He cheered and saluted the boss of the Rising Star channel. Tuna Kingdom is a location in a game accessible only through a warp in Wigga's town after graduating from the Forest of Giants. It's considered the primary stage for mid-level players, with a central castle as the reference point, surrounded by four castles in the north, east, south, and west. Players initially encounter the west castle after passing through the warp magic. In games, latecomers often fall behind veterans who have already established themselves and are affiliated with powerful guilds. This makes it easier for veterans to grow and receive support, which is why the Archmage streamer gained a lot of interest and became a hot topic. Hyanwa arrived at Tuna Kingdom and was immediately recognized by the crowd, who began to make assumptions about his next actions. Hyanwa announced that he would be open to taking pictures with everyone. After taking a photo with Hyanwa, the crowd shifted their attention towards Gold and Lucky, which left him feeling frustrated. However, Hyanwu remained focused on his goal and thought to himself that things were still progressing as planned. He hoped that the fake rumors about him provoking the top ten guilds would settle down with this. For him, the main priority was the quest related to the main scenario, and he didn't want to be distracted by false rumors. While Hyanwu was ending the event, the Sneko company was observing and decided that it was time to teach the BJ Archmage a lesson. As Hyanwu emerged from the city, the Sneko guild approached him, asking to take a photo. Hyanwa noticed that they were from the Sniko Guild and that Nakato was fully buffed, revealing their intention to attack him. Despite this, he agreed to their request. Nakato then asked if Hyanwa had changed his staff, to which he replied that he had and that it was better for beating up people like them. The Sniko Guild was surprised when they realized that Hyanwa had known their intentions from the start. Despite this, they attacked him with confidence, believing that it was too late for Hyanwa to retaliate. Nakato commented that regardless of Hyanwa's items, he was still just a mage and wouldn't be able to survive long against close-range attacks. As they continued their attack, the Sniko guild became confused as to why Hyanwa wasn't resisting. It was then that they noticed that their reinforcements had already been killed by Gold and Lucky. Hyanwa commented that it seemed like the PKers were quite surprised. Hyanwa remained unaffected by the Sniko guild's attacks due to his mana shield. He then proceeded to start a live stream. Hyanwa acknowledged that the sudden stream may have surprised some people who were looking forward to his first stream in Tuna Kingdom. He explained that he had run into some boring people who kept trying to ambush him. To combat this, he had changed his strategy and become a tanker. Hyanwa challenged the Sniko Guild, saying that if they somehow managed to kill him, he would invest $100,000 into their guild. Hyanwa, while under attack, muses to himself about the weakness of mages in close combat, even in games like God Wars. He had anticipated the attacker's strategy of trying to get close to him, but he is hesitant to use Lucky of Gold, as it could potentially put his companion at risk. Instead, he decides to take on the role of a tank and become the target, putting himself in harm's way to protect his ally Hyanwu taunts the attackers, who are members of the Sniko Guild, while Nakato is bewildered about how Hyanwu was able to identify them. Lucky and Gold appear on the scene and eliminate the assailants. Hyanwa then rates the defeated players at 37 points, causing confusion among the viewers. He clarifies that it's their rating and proceeds to loot them. Hyanwa is considering which items to take and decides that if he takes only the best items, he might be suspected. As a result, he chooses to be cautious and takes the Treantwood shield, centaur main robe, and Tuna sword. Hyanwa notes to himself that the PKers have paused their activities since a famous guild was defeated. He decides to move forward with his next plan and suggests to the viewers that merely ending the stream here will not be sufficient. He proposes putting on a show, saying that since they have come to see a mage, they should witness some magic. Hyanwu chooses to put on a show to intimidate other players who are targeting him. He uses multiple skills to defeat a centaur that was charging towards him, 
and continues to attack. Observing players are puzzled as they see him using skills without appearing to run low on mana. Viewers of his stream also notice this and recall that in his last stream, Hyanwa had to consume thousands of dollars worth of potions to maintain his mana levels. Hyanwa killed the last centaur required to allow him to summon a centaur guardian. He ends the stream despite viewers wanting more, as he believes revealing his full power may not be wise. He then summoned the centaur guardian and he equips his centaur guardian with a trayant root spear before gold expresses gratitude towards him. Hyanwa then states that he wanted to test gold's ability but decides to prioritize progressing the main quest as quickly as possible while his pursuers are less active. He announces that they need to head to the West Castle immediately. Upon reaching the East Watchtower within the West Castle, Hyanwu is greeted by Zagara, the Lord of the Castle. Hyanwu is surprised to meet a castellan from the beginning and expresses his honor to meet him. Zagara informs him that his soldiers have lost their lives to an unknown power and requests that Hyanwu investigate the source of this power since he has survived it. Hyanwu is also curious about the power that almost took his life. Zagara requested Hyanwo to identify the source of the unknown power, and swears on his name that the reward will match his accomplishment. Hyanwo receives the main scenario quest to investigate the restricted area, with a legendary skill card book as a reward. He is surprised to see an additional reward of a master skill book, but only if he completes the quest without dying. A master skill book is a highly valuable item in the game as it allows a player to instantly raise the rank of one of their skills to master. Achieving mastery in a skill requires a significant amount of time and effort, so the master skill book is highly sought after by players who want to avoid that process. Lee Seol arrives in Miami and thought that she had instructed the guild members to avoid calling her for direct meetups. She wonders how important the announcement must be for them to gather at the guild headquarters. She speculates whether it could be a new raid strategy or a reorganization of the guild. Lee Seol receives a message from Hyanwa informing her that he already fixed the phone and doesn't require any compensation. She felt bad for causing trouble, and she considers sending him money for the repairs, but is unsure of the cost. She realizes that she cannot continue avoiding people as they also live in the same neighborhood. She then messaged back promising to treat him some time. At the Abyss Guild headquarters in Miami, Florida, Lee Seol observes that all the guild's executives, high rankers, and core members are present. The guild master, Merlin, greets everyone and thanks them for attending. He explains that they have convened due to a problem that poses a threat to both the Abyss Guild and God Wars ecosystem. Merlin then proceeds to show a BJ Archmage. Despite the confusion of the gathered members, Emma, the Abyss Guild's manager, takes over and begins to explain the situation. She talks about Archmage Streamer, a man who is causing destruction to God Wars ecosystem, displaying rare items and boss monsters, and eluding high-level users with ease. Emma reveals that Archmage Streamer is intruding on the game's system and Alpha Company has almost completely stopped moderating the game, leaving it up to the Abyss Guild to bring justice. She announces that the Guild will put a bounty on Archmage Streamer, with members able to use any method they choose to interrupt his gameplay, promising a generous reward for evidence of successful interference. One of the members raises concern about their inability to confront Archmage Streamer due to their high levels. Emma agrees and suggests that the Abyss Guild will provide active support for everyone training alt accounts. The members of the Abyss Guild find Emma's proposal advantageous as they get to train alt accounts for free, regardless of whether or not they succeed in taking down BJ Archmage. Lee Seol thinks to herself that Emma's plan seems reasonable, but she has an uncomfortable feeling that she cannot explain. Hyanwa arrived at the location of the Barrier Rift. Gold felt uneasy about the place. Hyanwa was certain that it was the entrance to the restricted area he had been told about by Zagara. The area had been sealed off following an incident making it a perfect location for uninterrupted training. Without hesitation, Hyanwu entered the portal. Upon entering the area, Hyanwu found himself hindered by the black wind, which restricted his field of vision and impaired his hearing. Despite these challenges, he was tasked with facing off against monsters that were notoriously difficult to defeat, and expected to do so without suffering any deaths. Hyanwu recognized the difficulty of the main scenario, and knew that it would have been nearly impossible to clear the area alone if it weren't for his unique abilities. Hyanwo activated his combat abilities and swiftly eliminated a zombie centaur. He instructed his companions, Lucky and Gold, to lure the creature towards them. Gold impaled the monster, and Hyanwo finished it off with a powerful attack, which led to him leveling up. Hyanwo acknowledged the benefits of hunting in a difficult location free from the threat of player killers. Hyanwo spotted a glowing monster, which he identified as a quest mob. He informed his companions, Lucky and Gold, not to attack it immediately so that they could continue hunting in the area for an indefinite period. In the Abyss Guild HQ, Merlin complimented Emma on her bold move. 
He recognized that God Wars had been a perfect game until now and expressed curiosity about how B.J. Archmage was able to manipulate the system. Emma admitted that the possibility was low, but she reminded him of B.J. Archmage's PK incident. She suggested using this event to motivate and boost the morale of the guild members, while also making it clear that the Abyss Guild would never abandon its members. Emma had prepared equipment to interfere with B.J. Archmage, which turned out to be a small park ranking. Small Park is a popular channel that creates rankings based on various stats, such as time attack, in a visually appealing format. While the criteria used in calculating the rankings are objective, the rankings themselves are unofficial and subjective. Nevertheless, Small Park has amassed over 51.32 million subscribers and is widely considered to be an absolute indicator of a player's skill. One of the popular rankings on the channel is the Under 200 Ranking, which ranks players below level 200 in terms of their strength. This has led to many users lining up to see who among them is the strongest, excluding the top-ranked players. Emma mentions that including BJ Archmage's name on the ranking would attract the attention of strong players. Merlin questions whether she will let him rank in the small park ranking despite not reaching level 70. Emma confirms that she has given him a lot of money and expects Small Park Channel to comment on it soon. Small Park announces the under 200 ranking of the week and mentions the 999th spot. They then bring up BJ Archmage noting that he has been popular lately. Hyakju, who is watching the program, expresses amazement at the news of BJ Archmage's rank up. Hyunwoo was feeling downcast and confused upon hearing the news about BJ Archmage's rank up. Others around him were also confused as BJ Archmage was only at level 70. In contrast, Hyakju was excited about the news. Hyunwoo was worried that this sudden turn of events might make him a target of the guilds or named players who previously didn't care about him. The Small Park Channels under 200 ranking, is considered a platform for showcasing great potential for development. Rising up in the rankings is viewed as a shortcut to becoming a star and making one's presence known. It is a highly sought-after achievement for those who aspire to achieve fame and success. Hyunwoo wondered to himself how he had made it into the ranking. He questioned if the rising star CEO had a hand in it, and thought that it would be unlikely for anyone else to go to such lengths to interfere with him. He also thought that the CEO was bold if it was for advertisement purposes. Hyun will realize that he could not be too relaxed anymore and decided to focus on completing the restricted area quest as quickly as possible. The assistant asked Young Jun if he had anything to do with Hyun was ranking on the small park channel. Young Jun denies any involvement, stating that he knows the owner of the channel and he won't listen to him. Young Jun reveals that BJ Archmage defeated the Snicko Guild, making it impossible for mid tier guilds to disturb him. Young Jun believes that BJ Archmage purposely made himself a target by being mentioned in the small park ranking, as he is crazy about attention. Young Jun suggests that they should ask for favors from BJ Archmage and bribe him for his support. A large number of high level players are coming to the low level hunting grounds in search of BJ Archmage. The crowd questions the justification of high level players going after a level 70 player, regardless of the price on his head. However, some believe that capturing BJ Archmage could boost their reputation and potentially land them in the small park ranking. Despite this, others express confusion as even players sponsored by Tier 1 guilds, such as Scarf Guild, are joining in the hunt. Avid from the Scarf Guild instructs his team to focus on capturing BJ Archmage, disregarding the presence of other users in the area. He has a personal motive for catching BJ Archmage as he hopes to recover a cutoff evaluation from a previous death. A lap from the Red Snake Company greets Avit and comments on his quick response to the news. He also notes that it's Avit's first login since the game over and that he must have had some difficulty getting to the location. Avit takes offense to the comment and accuses a lap of picking a fight, which a lap denies. Avit thinks to himself about taking down his competitors if something goes wrong. He then hears someone shout that BJ Archmage has appeared. Avit ordered the archers to confirm if the person was BJ Archmage but it turned out to be two centaurs, who they were confused by. Unbeknownst to them, Hyunwoo had used the polymorph skill to create the illusion. The viewers on the private live stream were entertained by the situation, while Hyunwoo was satisfied that everything was going as planned. Earlier, before emerging from the rift, Hyunwoo was feeling frustrated that the Scarf Guild and Red Snake Company, both first to guilds, were chasing him like rabid dogs to catch him. He was surprised that there were even people over level 90 gathered in the Golden Plains and wondered if they had left their conscience outside their capsules. Hyunwoo felt fortunate to have received the Chain Lightning skill from the level 70 reward card, as it is incredibly useful when facing multiple enemies. However, 
He also acknowledges that winning may cause retaliation from other guilds, which could impede his progress on the quest. Despite this, Hyenwa decides to face the challenge head-on. Currently, Hyenwa is relieved to see a larger number of players gathered than he expected. However, he also realizes that his enemies might not have known about the gathering and would not have joined forces against him. He plans to use the situation to his benefit by creating distance between himself and his opponents. Hyenwa is confident that his speed will allow him to outpace any player chasing him. Hyenwa expressed gratitude towards his viewers for not revealing his disguise. However, other players in the vicinity became aware of this and called him out. They then spotted two centaurs running. Hyenwa subsequently ended the polymorph skill and made his stream public. He then used the haste spell and provoked other players to try and catch him, then turned and ran away. The players chasing Hyenwa were bewildered by his speed as they were unable to catch up with him. Avid felt embarrassed by the situation but was determined to catch Hyenwa no matter what it took. As Avid and Elap pursued Hyenwa, they became aware of the possibility of being ambushed by Lucky. Concerned about the danger of proceeding without support, Avid decided to halt the chase. He cursed himself for his failure to capture BJ Archmage. Upon realizing that the players chasing him had given up, Hyenwa decided to stop. He then reflected that running away could be a viable option if things went wrong in the future. Hyenwa was satisfied that the events that transpired would make for interesting content. Hyenwa observed that a few players were still attempting to catch him. He thought about potentially PKNG them, and the chat expressed support for the idea. However, Hyenwa ultimately decided against it. He conveyed to his viewers that there was no point in targeting players weaker than him as it would bring him neither wealth nor honor. He reasoned that capturing those players would not even compensate for the cost of the polymorph skill he used. Afterward, Hyenwa opened his inventory and inspected the quest item. He recognized that he needed to complete the quest promptly if he was to reveal new monsters and dungeons to his viewers. While ending the stream, Asmo donated $10,000 to him and asked to show him more. The viewers also requested more, causing Hyenwa to hesitate while Asmo continued to donate and promised to increase the donation every 10 minutes. Hyenwa thought about how he had obtained a lot of information about the quest and needed to play it safe. He was also cautious about ensuring that the hidden information was not revealed. Despite his reservations, Asmo had created an atmosphere that made it difficult for Hyenwa to reject the request for more content. Zagara's people appeared abruptly by warping in and informed Hyenwa that they had come to escort him. They had received news that he had left the restricted area unharmed and that Zagara was eagerly awaiting his arrival. The viewers were left bewildered by the appearance of an NPC, but Hyenwa was content with the turn of events. To avoid any further confusion, he made the decision to end the live broadcast and cited a developer regulation that prohibited the upload of the quest's process. Hyenwa hoped that this explanation would dissuade viewers from pressuring him in the future. They then warped back to the East Watchtower. Hyenwa handed over the quest items to Zagara, successfully completing the quest and resulting in him gaining two levels. Zagara commended Hyenwa and presented him with the quest rewards. Hyenwa was elated to receive the Master Skill Book which could not be obtained through monetary means. This book allowed players to train a skill to the master rank, which can only be achieved upon reaching level 150. Reaching the master rank for a skill requires a player to have a minimum level of 150, regardless of whether they learned the skill at level 10 and continuously used it. Hyenwa made the decision to save the master skill book for a more critical moment and to postpone opening the legendary skill book, as he was keen to receive the next quest and keep moving. He was aware that his enemies would not stop after watching his last stream. After inquiring about the next quest, Zagara informed Hyenwa that his men had been attacked by a mysterious man based on the clues he had provided. Hyenwa was then given the main scenario quest, which involved finding the mysterious man in the restricted area. The hidden reward for completing the quest was Zagara's ring. Zagara directed Hyenwa to proceed to the teleport right away and use the magic circle to cast the warp magic. Despite his interest in seeing the ring's stats, Hyenwo was forcefully taken to the magic circle by the guards. Hyenwo was transported to the Golden Plains through the magic circle, and although he was disappointed about not being able to see the stats of Zagara's ring, he assumed it was good as it was the reward from the main quest. As he searched for the entrance to the dungeon, other players in the vicinity who had been waiting for him began to take notice of his presence. Hyenwo hurriedly entered the restricted area and felt that it was safer inside. With the hope of acquiring a valuable skill, he proceeded to open the legendary skill book and came across the indomitable will ability. 
In God Wars, monster difficulty increases with their level and diversity of skills used. Ranged attacks and wide area skills are the most challenging gameplay factors. Mage classes are particularly vulnerable as their casting can be interrupted by attacks, and they need more time to cast strong spells. Hence, the indomitable will skill has become a necessity for high-level users. High and were considered the penalty of increased casting time was preferable to having his casting cancelled. To fight against Pikus, he realized that he needed to learn wide-area magic skills to counter fast short-range dealers. High and will believe that using wide-area magic spells that could inflict status ailments would be the best approach, but he also knew that these spells were expensive. High and will carefully surveyed the area and quickly spotted the quest monster. After examining the requirements of the quest, he pondered on whether he could just attack it without having to defeat it. He wondered if it would be wise to finish the quest quickly and leave before more users showed up. Hyenwo contemplated postponing the quest and raising his level in the restricted area. He estimated the number of players he saw outside and wondered how many more would show up. He considered selling some of his items to afford the moving casting skill. Before venturing out, he decided to prepare himself thoroughly. The staff of the Rising Star Channel noticed a significant number of players gathering to catch B.J. Archmage. It had been three days since B.J. Archmage had disappeared from the Golden Plains, yet the number of players continued to increase, and a tag play had begun to catch him. Young Jun expressed his disinterest, stating that it would not be fun to show the same content as before. However, the staff pointed out the success of the previous broadcast. Young Jun suggested adding a new condition to the show, such as having B.J. Archmage fight head-on without running away. He believed that it was time for B.J. Archmage to fulfill their request. People were buzzing about B.J. Archmage and eagerly anticipating what he will do next. Meanwhile, Hyanwu was participating in an auction to acquire the moving casting skill. He knew that the winning bid in the recent auction for the same skill was $37,000, and he had gathered $43,000 after selling his items. Hyanwu cursed as he killed the monster, leveling up and reaching level 80. Despite his achievement, he was not pleased as he had failed to acquire the moving casting skill. He remained optimistic, stating that he could obtain it from the level 80 card deck, confident that the war dragon would grant him the skill. Hyanwu opened the skill card book with anticipation but was disappointed when he couldn't find the moving casting skill. However, his eyes fell on the shockwave skill, which he found impressive due to its paralyzing effect. He believed that it was one of the best among wide-ranged area magic skills and expressed satisfaction with his find. Though he didn't get the moving casting skill, he was confident that with his indomitable will and the shockwave skill, he could defeat a seven-man party. Upon emerging from the rift, Hyanwu began a live broadcast and was surprised to receive a message from the president of Rising Star. The president asked if Hyanwu was planning to do the catch-me-if-you-can content like last time. Hyanwu replied that he didn't need to overdo it and face Pikus. The president then inquired if PK was possible. Hyan will realize that the president didn't enjoy the previous broadcast and concluded that running away wasn't what B.J. Archman should do. He responded that there was no reason to refuse and decided that he shouldn't show fear, as he had planned to fight at some point anyway. Hyan will was surprised when the president granted him the moving casting skill. While this was happening, the crowd was discussing how Avit's party had behaved like thugs and were humiliated by B.J. Archman. Avit realized that he could not afford to give up, as it would damage his reputation. Four days ago, Avit waited for B.J. Archmage at the main gate of the West Castle after his stream ended. However, he received a message that B.J. Archmage had already left, leaving him frustrated. At present, Avid is determined to kill B.J. Archmage and is not bothered by the mockery he receives from others as he believes it will all be resolved once he achieves his goal. When Hyanwa arrived, Avit and his group challenged him to a fight by throwing a white scarf, which symbolizes a duel. The Scarf Guild members win honor and rewards if they win the duel, but they will be exiled from the guild if they lose. The battle between Hyanwu and Avid began with Hyanwu casting a fireball, but Avid used his skill to get close and interrupt him, followed by another skill. Despite the common belief that a mage wouldn't win against a melee attacker, Hyanwu surprised both Avid and the viewers by successfully hitting him with a fireball. Viewers initially thought that Hyanwu's fireball casting was interrupted but Asmo commented that B.J. Archmage had learned the indomitable will and donated $1,000. Hyanwu then prepared two more skills, and despite Avid being surprised by the damage he received, taking away 10% of his HP, he knew he couldn't keep taking hits from Hyanwu. Avid decided to attack and defeat Hyanwu immediately. Upon seeing Avid's calmness and readiness to attack, 
Hyun Woo recognized him as a formidable opponent. He surprised both Avot and the viewers by moving while casting. Meanwhile, Asmo made another donation and mentioned that Hyun Woo had also learned moving casting. Hyun Woo hit Avot with a lightning bolt, causing him to become paralyzed, before following up with an ice ball attack. Despite Asmo's comment that close combat was disadvantageous for an archmage due to reduced movement speed while using moving casting, he was surprised to see Hyun Woo's speed as he dodged Avot's attacks. What Avot and the viewers were unaware of was that Hyun Woo had used the master skill book to master the moving casting skill, which explained his unaffected speed while using the skill. Hyun Woo then used fireball and shockwave skills, expressing his resolve to leave Avot unable to even think of catching him before finally defeating him completely. Avot closed the distance between himself and Hyun Woo, attempting to launch an attack. However, Hyun Woo remained confident informing Avot that he had ten seconds before the shockwave skill was fully cast and advising him to flee if he could. Despite Hyunwoo's warning, Avot continued to attack as the countdown for the shockwave skill continued. As soon as the countdown ended, Hyunwoo activated the skill, causing Avot to become paralyzed. Hyunwoo decided that the final blow should be special and took out an axe, much to the surprise of the viewers. Asmo made another donation, and Hyunwoo delivered the final blow, bringing an end to the fight. The people watching discussed the one-sided nature of the battle. Hyun Woo returned to the East Watchtower and celebrated his victory over the rising star of a first to guild. However, his celebration was interrupted by Zagara, who asked him about the unknown person they had been searching for. Hyun Woo informed him that he had found the person, but they were quite fast, and he had only managed to obtain a trace. He passed the trace to Zagara, who commented on how they still didn't know the person's identity, as stated in the letter. Hyun Woo's necklace pointed toward Zagara who asked who made it, he revealed that it was made by Zuga. Zagara expressed hesitation in being involved in the matter as the lord of a castle and asked Hyun Woo if he could handle it. After confirming his acceptance of the main scenario quest, Hyun Woo received a ring from Zagara. He was pleased with the ring's stats, but noticed the hidden information that revealed the activation of set options once the ring of King Tunga was equipped. In the Rising Star office, the staff was elated as they had reached 389k viewers. While this was happening, Young Jun was in conversation with someone about the advertisement fee. Hyun Woo bought a new bag for Hyun and was considering whether they should rent a bigger house. He believed that his current item setting was adequate for the next hunting ground, so he didn't think he needed to spend any more money on it. He also thought that since he was now earning money, he should improve his quality of life. Hyun Woo received a message from the Rising Star asking for a meeting, which he accepted. During the meeting, Young Jun informed Hyun Woo that he wanted to discuss advertisement and sponsorship contracts related to the BJ Archmage name. Hyun Woo agreed to the proposal and asked Young Jun what he needed to do. Young Jun then requested a live show for the clients, to which Hyun Woo asked if he could simply demonstrate his skills live instead. Young Jun confirmed that Hyun Woo could perform his skills live as he usually does. Hyun Woo agreed and promised to inform Young Jun of the date after making proper preparations. Young Jun and his assistant discussed Hyun Woo's upcoming live broadcast, where he would be hunting for small golems. Young Jun requested that the directing put more effort into the broadcast to impress the clients, and asked the assistant to gather more video materials of Hyun Woo compared to other users. He also suggested including clips of the top 10 guild members hunting the same golems, and requested that the assistant find clips of Merlin of the Abyss Guild, who is also an Archmage class. While Hyun Woo was killing a small golem in just 10 seconds, some players were observing him in amazement. Hyun Woo then collected all the quest items and met with Suga. Suga told him that he would need to make a compass like before to pursue the unknown man. He suggested combining the fragment of the god who lost his name from the pendant with the trace of the unknown man, that Hyun Woo had to make the compass more accurate in heading towards the owner. Hyun Woo attributed his quick completion of the quest to his ability to identify which golems would drop the necessary items. He considered doing a show for clients of him hunting small golems, but he deemed them too weak for his current level. After completing the quest, Zuga rewarded Hyun Woo with a hammer, and he checked its stats, discovering its ability to extract and transfer the abilities of an item to another item, which surprised him. Zuga explains that using the golem's crystals will allow one to summon blue stone golems. These golems can be captured to obtain melting stones. The melting stones can then be used to combine two powers into one. Hyun Woo has received the main scenario quest which requires him to use the blue stone golem summoning stone to summon golems and defeat them in order to obtain melting stones. The option to extract an item and grant it to another item is a commonly found feature in many games. 
However, this system had not been discovered in God Wars until now, leading users to believe that such a system did not exist in the game. Hyun Woo considered where he would use the hammer and decided to extract from Weigar's white staff. His goal was to extract the plus one casting option and grant it to Tunga's staff, a level 89 legendary item with an average price of $120,000 on Jibei. Hyun Woo was confident that he would be able to buy Tunga's staff once he secured an advertisement deal. He then noticed that Gold and Lucky have a quest. During a conversation in the Rising Star office, the assistant noticed that Young Jun had been constantly on his phone. The assistant suggested that the increasing interest from advertisers meant that BJ Archmage's value was also increasing. Young Jun agreed and explained that he had originally planned to take more time with the ads, but BJ Archmage's value had risen quicker than expected. They decided to prepare for a live showcase and announced the live broadcast time along with an edited version of the Viltgar Raid. Young Jun titled the live broadcast, Warm Up. Young Jun expressed his gratitude to the attending advertisers and assured them that the live event would be starting soon. He was confident in BJ Archmage's abilities and believed that everything was set for a successful event. The broadcast began, and Hyun Woo introduced himself to the audience. He explained that he would be performing a simple warm-up for the showcase and reassured the advertisers that they did not need to make a definite decision about the advertisements just yet. Hyun Woo had no plans to sign a big contract at this event only a few major commercials for a short period of time. Hyun was summoned the Blue Golem, which surprised Young Jun since it was his first time seeing the monster. Hyun Wu then announced that the Blue Stone Golem raid was starting. He felt a sense of excitement, believing that this was the stage where he risked his fate. He also realized that Lucky and Gold's evolution conditions were perfectly suited for the situation. Lucky's quest was to hunt the boss monster while Gold's quest was to defend his master against it. Hyun Woo analyzed the boss monster's phase, which involved recovery and cloning, and created distance to strategize his approach. He decided to showcase his potential during the battle and ordered Gold to destroy the surrounding stones and trees to create more space. Then, he ordered Lucky to use life or death to take the aggro from the boss monster. Hyun Woo believed that impressing the major league scouts would require him to show off his strategy rather than his firepower. He also calculated that the golem's swing cool time was 7.3 seconds. Hyun Woo began his attack on the boss monster, using multiple skills to lower its HP to 60%, which triggered its second phase. The boss monster then split into three golems. Hyun Woo ordered Lucky to take one of the golems, while he ordered Gold to use giantization and take the other golem. Hyun Woo summoned a golem, but the remaining blue stone golem clone began to run away. To prevent the clone from escaping, Hyun Woo took out Weigar's bow and released multiple skills, successfully defeating the fleeing clone. Feeling that the standard procedure was getting boring, Hyun Woo decided to change his approach and announced to the viewers that he will stop going by the standard. Hyun Woo announced that he would use Dragon Fever to fight against the last Blue Stone Golem. If he couldn't defeat it within the effect duration of Dragon Fever, he would reveal a quest that only he knew in the current game. This excited the viewers. He then activated the Dragon Fever. Hyun Woo's performance left the advertisers feeling content, while Emma was engaged in a discussion with Gamma Pharmaceuticals who expressed their interest in investing in B.J. Archmage. Emma subsequently requested that they gather all available information about B.J. Archmage. Hyun Woo defeated the last blue golem, only to have it split into ten smaller golems. He instructed his companions to prevent the golems from escaping as he used chain lightning and shockwave to attack them. However, some viewers doubted Hyun Woo's ability to defeat the monsters before the dragon fever expired. Asmo donated $10,000 and stated that he would give Hyun Woo 10 times the amount if he failed. Hyun Woo used Chain Lightning and Shockwave to eliminate a majority of the golems. With only 23 seconds left for the Dragon Fever, he decided to finish off the last golem with a physical attack, which led to him leveling up. Hyun Woo felt confident about his skills and showmanship and believed that the advertisers must be content. However, he acknowledged that having the necessary abilities is not sufficient without a platform to showcase them. Hyun Woo announced that he would be targeting the Centaurus Knight next and would reveal the date and time on the Rising Star channel then ended the stream. He acquired the Melting Stone for his quest and witnessed Lucky's evolution. Hyun Woo was given the option to choose a new ability for Lucky and selected the Unbreakable Diamond skill, which offers increased defense at the cost of being unable to use other skills while active. Additionally, Gold finished his quest and increased his loyalty to grade 6. He then selected a new ability for the Guardian and was pleasantly surprised by what he saw. As Young Jun read through the comments and reactions of the viewers, 
His assistant arrived and asked about the contract as advertisers were incessantly calling after watching the live show. Young Jun replied that he had not made up his mind yet and felt that B.J. Archmage was not interested in advertisements. However, Young Jun was taken aback when B.J. Archmage introduced a new boss monster raid without any prior information. The assistant indicated that B.J. Archmage introduced the new boss monster raid to create a greater impact, which would lead to larger bets from advertisers. However, Young Jun disagreed and questioned the motive behind such a bold move for just a few thousand dollars. He believed that B.J. Archmage wanted to convey that the worth of his content could not be measured in monetary terms. Young Jun expressed his desire for B.J. Archmage to showcase new monsters or items that have never been seen before on their channel, and requested that they offer something appropriate to that effect. When the assistant suggested negotiating with advertisers for higher advertising fees, Young Jun clarified that they were not taking any advertisement fees. The assistant expressed confusion when Young Jun stated that they were not taking advertisement fees. Young Jun clarified that they were taking premium items and skills instead, which would aid B.J. Archmage. The assistant then raised concerns about the decreasing advertisement revenue of the company and their need to survive. Young Jun thought to himself that he would match B.J. Archmage's intentions and do his best to fulfill his responsibilities. Hyun Woo was at the West Castle and he could not believe that he had acquired the Berserker skill on Gold's skill card. Soon after, soldier NPCs approached him and informed him that Silga was searching for him. They then escorted him to the Golden Smithy. The Golden Smithy is a well-known location in West Castle that all players are familiar with. It is the only place where players can obtain the Tunga series, which are legendary items of the Tunga kingdom. Hyanwo was thrilled as he looked at the legendary items on display at the Golden Smithy. He even thought about how much money he could make by selling them, which would allow him to rent a better place. He was particularly interested in the Tunga's staff, which he planned to buy once he received the advertisement fees. Zuga took the melting stone from Hyanwo and explained that the soul metal obtained from the Dorito mines reacts to the owner's mana, and if the mana becomes more powerful, the reaction will also become stronger. He then proceeded to start the process of imbuing the melting stone into the necklace, asking Hyanwo to hold it tight. As the process began, Hyanwo was amazed to see the trace of the unknown person flowing like a liquid. After the necklace pointed in a certain direction, Hyanwo realized that he now had a compass to locate his next target. He expressed his excitement at being able to track down what the necklace was pointing towards and begin his next hunt. Before leaving, the Hyanwo checked the upgraded features of their necklace and saw the skill called Replay. This skill enables the user to reuse a previously used skill while disregarding the cooldown period. It is a unique skill that has never been discovered with a skill card that is not an item option. Even Asmo claimed that the only way to access the Replay skill was through an item option and offered a blank check to anyone who could produce the skill card. Therefore, the skill is also referred to as the blank check. Hyanwu expressed excitement after acquiring the Replay skill and Zuga wished him good luck on his upcoming quest. Hyanwu received a main scenario quest to eliminate the Centaur Knight, who was located in a restricted area. The quest promised a reward of the Tunga staff and an extra prize would be granted if the task was accomplished with a party of six or fewer people, which was the Tunga's Black Staff. Hyanwo was intrigued by Tunga's Black Staff and recalled his acquisition of Weigar's White Staff. He was convinced that the Black Staff possessed superior options when compared to Tunga's Staff. After calming down, Hyanwo considered the hidden reward condition of defeating the Centaur Knight in a party of six or less. He realized it would be a challenging task, likely requiring the skills of a level 90 professional player. Hyanwu reflected on the boss monster of the Golden Plains, the Black Centaur, which had twice the mobility and power of normal centaur monsters and was known to cause many users to struggle. Hyanwu speculated that the Centaur Knight was even stronger than the Black Centaur. He noted that Lucky, under the effects of haste and lightning speed, could match the Centaur Knight's speed, but once the lightning speed wore off, the Centaur Knight would catch up. Moreover, with the life or death skill, the fight would continue until one of them died meaning that Lucky could be chased until he perished. Hyanwo acknowledged that although Lucky had used the life or death skill before without getting into danger, he couldn't guarantee Lucky's safety this time. Emma was informed that the Rising Star would only accept advertisement fees in the form of in-game items or skills, rather than money. She silently commended Park Young Jun for his astuteness, recognizing that the truly valuable assets in God Wars couldn't be obtained with mere currency. When her subordinate asked for her decision, Emma realized that this situation played to their advantage. She believed that the items proposed by the Abyss Guild would surpass any other offers available. 
she was determined not to let B.J. Archmage evade her grasp for much longer. Young June reviewed the items proposed by the advertisers but found them lacking. He recommended asking them to propose rarer and more valuable items. However, his assistant expressed concern that the advertisers might withdraw their offers. Young Jun, undeterred, decided to let things be, believing that God Wars was a realm where courage and boldness were essential. He confidently predicted that no advertiser would willingly miss the chance to engage with B.J. Archmage, who was currently the center of attention. Hyun Woo initiated his live broadcast and ventured into a restricted area, noticing that the fog had intensified since his last visit. As the viewers engaged in discussions about the dungeon, the formidable centaur knight became visible in the distance. Aware of the monster's challenge for mage-type players, Hyun Woo resolved to capture it no matter what. He acknowledged that, unlike his usual raid routine, he had limited time due to specific circumstances. With a sense of urgency, Hyun Woo declared his intention to give his all and swiftly conclude today's raid. Asmo made a donation of $1,000. Asmo advised that it's important to find time to connect and engage with viewers during live broadcasts. He emphasized the significance of this based on his own experience. Hyun Woo used Dragon Fever to try and finish the fight within 10 minutes. He casted numerous spells, causing confusion among the viewers who struggled to see through the dense black fog. Some suspected him of hacking when he hit the boss from a distance, but a few noticed the necklace Hyun Woo was wearing and realized it helped him locate the monster. Despite the boss charging at him, Hyun Woo continued attacking with spells and evaded its attack. Hyun Woo summoned his allies, Gold and Lucky, who swiftly launched an attack on the boss. The boss retaliated, but Hyun Woo's mana shield absorbed the damage, allowing him to avoid the subsequent attack. The viewers became both excited and concerned about the unfolding events. Eventually, the boss redirected its focus towards Gold. Hyun Woo grinned pleased to see that his plan was developing as planned. In God Wars, when there are no tanks present, the monsters tend to target the player who inflicts the highest damage. However, this tactic, known as Agro Ping Pong, poses challenges as the monster is compelled to frequently change its attack target. This behavior can be disadvantageous since it is difficult to predict how the monster will react. In regular parties, where all members may not react swiftly, Agro Ping Pong becomes a dangerous strategy. The viewers had doubts about whether Hyun Woo could successfully execute the Ping Pong strategy without any issues. However, Hyun Woo had an advantage as he could monitor the aggro meter displayed on the monster's head. While the Dragon Fever's effect wore off, the Centaur Knight activated haste and prepared to strike. In the meantime, Asmo made a generous donation of $10,000 but believed that Hyun Woo had met his demise. Fortunately, Lucky utilized his skill to draw the boss's attention and took on its aggro. As the boss focused on Lucky, Hyun Woo continued his relentless attacks. The viewers became increasingly worried when they observed the boss closing in on Lucky. After some time, the boss finally caught up to Lucky and launched an attack. It followed with another attack but Lucky used the unbreakable diamond skill and successfully withstood the onslaught. Hyun Woo confused the viewers by utilizing the replay skill which they believed was only accessible as an add-on feature on an item. Following that, he activated the Dragon Fever skill. Asmo made another donation and expressed astonishment at Hyun Woo possessing the replay skill. Hyun Woo carefully calculated the distance, and activated his skills, and unleashed a flurry of abilities on the boss. As a result, the boss transitioned into its third phase after taking heavy damage. Hyun Woo expressed his confidence stating that he had almost defeated the boss. However, he didn't want to let the viewers down and intended to stay engaged until the very end. To accomplish this, he decided to move closer to the boss. This decision confused the viewers. Hyun Woo grabbed an axe, causing excitement among the viewers. As he observed the boss's health rapidly decreasing, he realized that Gold was about to land the final blow. Despite his efforts to intervene, he was too late and the boss was defeated. Gold and Lucky celebrated their victory while Hyun Woo felt embarrassed by his failed attempt. He ended the broadcast, but he was relieved that Gold and Lucky emerged unscathed. Hyun Woo expressed concern about the short duration of the live stream, wondering if it would be acceptable. He also worried about potential complaints from the advertisers. 
Hyunwoo wondered if he would no longer receive advertisements. He obtained the Centaur Knight's treasure and expressed disappointment upon realizing that there was only one reward for defeating the boss. He emphasized that he had successfully defeated a boss that typically required a team of ten or more people. Despite his frustration, he expressed a glimmer of hope that the reward he gets was not an item that could not be traded. Hyunwoo opened the box and obtained the Centaur Knight's arrow. He felt delighted upon discovering that it was an item he could trade with others. However, he was taken aback when he discovered that it possessed the Double Arrow skill. Double Arrow is a skill unique to archers that lives up to its name by allowing them to shoot an extra arrow when they release one. Hyunwoo pondered the situation, thinking that if the Double Arrow skill was a built-in feature of the weapon, it meant that other classes could also utilize it. He considered it to be an improvement compared to Tunga's arrow. However, he anticipated that the value of such an item would likely be quite high, estimating it to cost at least $100,000. The unknown egg unexpectedly began to emit a radiant glow and absorb the power of the nameless god. As a result, the progress of the egg's hatching surged to 9%, validating Hyunwa's assumption that it hatches more rapidly when infused with the nameless god's power. The once-restricted area underwent purification, revealing the presence of the unknown man in the distance. In response, Hyunwoo instructed Gold and Lucky to ready themselves for a battle. However, he was stunned when he saw the unknown guy's level, which was significantly higher than his. Upon seeing that the enemy is a level 444, he recognized that even the most advanced players in God Wars had not surpassed level 400. With this realization, he concluded that the unknown guy was not an ordinary monster designed to be defeated and captured. Gold and Lucky displayed eagerness to engage in battle, but Hyunwoo felt inclined to retreat. However, he noticed that the unknown man had no intention of attacking them. Just then, Sagara and his guard arrived on the scene, causing the unknown man to flee. As a result of completing the quest, Hyunwoo gained two levels. He felt a sense of relief knowing that it was a scripted scenario where the NPC had come to his aid. The group then made their way back to East Watchtower. Sagara expressed gratitude to Hyunwoo for eliminating the threat to his castle, acknowledging that no reward could adequately repay him. In light of this, Sagara presented Hyunwoo with the most valuable item he could offer as a token of gratitude. Hyunwoo acquired the Tunga's Black Staff, and upon examining its statistics, he marveled at its powerful attributes, considering it almost like a cheat. He noted that the staff increased the size of magic spells by 28%, which roughly translated to a 20% boost in damage. Additionally, he discovered that the staff possessed another option called Serpent Eye, a skill he had never encountered before. Recognizing that this skill was no ordinary ability, he decided to enhance the staff further by using Zuga's plus one option hammer. Sagara had another item to present to Hyunwoo. His team had discovered a leaf in the purified restricted area, precisely where the unknown figure had been standing. As Sagara handed the leaf to Hyunwoo, it suddenly underwent a transformation in appearance. Sagara explained that it was a leaf from the Mirage Forest, a place where everything could change its appearance. He inferred that this leaf indicated Hyunwoo's next destination, suggesting that his path was now set towards the Mirage Forest. Hyunwoo received a new main quest that directed him to the Mirage Forest. His objective was to gather information about the Nameless God. Excited about the prospect of exploring a new area, Young Jun was reviewing BJ Archmage's recent live stream, reflecting on the success of the boss monster raid that was completed in just six minutes. However, he found it too successful and pondered how BJ Archmage managed to schedule a notice for the boss monster appearance. Young Jun speculated whether BJ Archmage was undertaking a quest on his own that provided him with such privileges. He suspected that BJ Archmage must have a connection with Alpha Company, the creators of God Wars, as it was the only plausible explanation for his access to exclusive information that had not been disclosed before. Young Jun expressed concern about an advertiser's request, which involved solo killing Ghost, the boss monster of the Mirage Forest. The assistant suggested that BJ Archmage might be capable of fulfilling this task. The assistant was surprised that the reward was a familiar spirit skill card. They noted that the familiar spirit skill card was a highly sought-after item that had not been released to the market and was exclusively controlled by the Adventurer Guild, 
making it extremely rare and valuable. Young Jun recalled about a conversation with Gamma Pharmaceuticals where they expressed dissatisfaction with the video quality of a raid. In response, Young Jun proposed a refund as a resolution. Gamma Pharmaceuticals then raised the possibility of an additional contract in exchange for the refund. Young Jun, considering the potential reward, asked about it. To his surprise, Gamma Pharmaceuticals suggested a familiar spirit card as the reward. They further added that if Young Jun agreed to the proposal, they would provide him with the first request. Merlin questioned Emma about giving BJ Arc Major commission, to which Emma confirmed through Gamma Pharmaceuticals. Emma explained that if BJ Arc Major successfully solo killed Ghost, the boss monster of Mirage Forest, within 15 days during a live stream, she would reward him with a familiar spirit card. Merlin expressed interest in BJ Arc Major's response as it would help them determine his next course of action. Emma revealed that she had already leaked information about the route to the Hunting Snake Guild. Merlin commended Emma's thorough planning, acknowledging that they couldn't allow BJ Archmage to continue causing trouble. Emma expressed her hope that BJ Archmage would unknowingly fall into their trap while maintaining a cheerful facade, with the viewers cheering him on. Hyunwoo felt a sense of happiness as he read the commission to kill Ghost from the advertisers. He was confident in his ability to defeat Ghost easily. Determined to make up for the disappointment during the Centaur Night Live, Hyunwoo planned to sell his current equipment and purchase new armor. However, he knew that simply defeating Ghost alone would not be enough. Hyunwoo aimed to deliver a live performance that would astonish everyone, securing more advertisements in the process. His ultimate goal was to pay off his remaining debt, improve his brother's condition by providing him with better rehabilitation treatment and support his sister's dream of attending an art academy. Hyunwoo reflected on his previous experiences in Mirage Forest as he ventured there once again. The forest was primarily intended for players between levels 100 and 110, accessible through a warp magic portal after receiving a quest from Tunga Kingdom's West Castle. In this area, not only were there slimes, a type of transforming monster, but the mirage itself could alter the appearance of both geographical features and players. To discern between monsters, slimes, or other players, the only method was to engage in combat and determine their true nature through attack. Hyunwoo thought that the Mirage Forest was an ideal location for ill-mannered users to engage in player killing by disguising themselves as monsters. This is why the forest earned the nickname Ill-Mannered Forest. The Mirage Forest gained significant notoriety due to the infamous Waiyang Guild Ghost Steel incident. During a boss raid on Ghost, the boss monster in the forest, the renowned Tier 1 Guild, Waiyang Guild, was attacked. All 14 guild members participating in the raid were instantly killed, and the boss monster was stolen from them. The thieves responsible for the theft went on to establish a guild known as the Hunting Snake Guild, which specialized in stealing and engaging in player killing activities. Hyunwoo knew that hunting in the Mirage Forest required a defensive strategy due to the past incident. To ensure safety from player killing, it became customary to form three groups, each consisting of five people, as a protective shield. Lucky discovered a hidden dungeon called Slime's Abode, much to Hyunwoo's excitement. Hyunwoo realized that leveling up in the dungeon would provide a safer alternative to avoid player killing in the Mirage Forest. Although the existence of hidden dungeons in the forest was known, finding them was challenging due to the ever-changing appearance of the field. Additionally, the heightened awareness of PK made searching for hidden dungeons even more difficult. Hyunwoo felt fortunate to be the first one to have discovered this particular hidden dungeon. Hyunwoo expressed his gratitude to Lucky for discovering the dungeon and eagerly anticipated the opportunity to level up. Meanwhile, within the forest, players continued to fall victim to player killing. A PK player took pleasure in taunting their victims, particularly relishing in leaving only the healer alive in a party of three. They warned that such fate could have been avoided had the victims remained within the protected area designated by the Explorer Guild and refrained from venturing outside without knowing their place. With the final strike, the PK player ended their victims' lives. Another man arrived at the scene and addressed Beagle. The unknown man reprimanded Beagle for acting recklessly during an important commission, comparing their behavior to that of a trained dog that follows orders to wait. Beagle expressed frustration, questioning why he wasn't provided with proper support. 
He also mentioned the uncertainty of whether the individual known as B.J. Archmage had accepted the commission. In response, the unknown man suggested that Beagle could give up if he disliked the situation, emphasizing that there were still four other people on the waiting list. Refusing to give up, Beagle stated that he couldn't do so. In his thoughts, he expressed the desire to catch a significant target like B.J. Archmage in order to gain recognition and become as renowned as the guild master. He compared himself to a hunting dog, emphasizing his determination and unwillingness to easily abandon his prey. Hyunwoo kept defeating monsters and eventually reached level 89. He equipped the Tunga's black staff and was pleasantly surprised by the rewards of titles that came with it. Excited to experience the power of the Serpent Eye's skill, he eagerly looked forward to testing it out. In God Wars, there are crowd control skills referred to as CC skills. These skills have the ability to temporarily disable enemies. The most prominent CC skills are Paralyze and Sleep, which immobilize opponents. There is also Confusion, which removes aggression, Blind that hinders sight, and Petrify, which can be found as an item modifier on Tunga's Black Staff. Petrify is advantageous as it resets the enemy's behavior pattern. While continuing his hunt, Hyunwoo noticed that his gauge filled up rapidly. He realized that by casting his attack spells three times, he could fully charge his skill, Serpent Eyes. The slimes in the Mirage Forest were particularly troublesome because they seemed to be never-ending. Curiosity sparked in Hyunwoo's mind as he wondered about the potential effects of his new skill, Serpent Eyes. Hyunwoo activated his skill, Serpent Eyes, causing all the monsters surrounding him to turn into stone. He was astounded by the skill's efficiency, as it affected multiple targets at once. He calculated that if he had Dragon Fever active, he could use the skill every 30 seconds. However, he couldn't shake off his concern about being accused of hacking. Lucky effortlessly disposed of the petrified monsters, leading Hyunwoo to level up to 90. Unfazed by his username, Hyunwoo focused on the positive results he achieved. He decided to proceed with killing the ghost boss after selecting a skill card for his level 90 reward. Hyunwoo was pleasantly surprised by the skill he obtained and made plans to start hunting the ghost boss. Before setting off, he decided to sell some of his items to buy snacks for Hyren. His friend, Hyukju, became curious about his activities and questioned him. Hyunwoo quickly made up an excuse, pretending to be texting his girlfriend which made the others doubtful and suspicious. When he revealed it was a joke, they felt relieved, but Hyunwoo felt a bit offended that they doubted his ability to attract a girlfriend. Reflecting on his recent lack of contact with girls, except for getting compensation for his phone from Lee Seol, he pondered the likelihood of a woman paying attention to him. In an effort to earn some money, he posted the Biltrian staff up for auction. Hyukju quickly noticed that the Biltrian staff was posted for auction and it was the same one used by Archmage Streamer. He informed Hyunwoo about this discovery, leaving him surprised. Hyunwoo now hoped that the item would fetch a high price in the auction. In the Abyss Guild, Emma and Seol were discussing Seol's recording schedule. Seol mentioned that he hurriedly flew to their location thanks to Emma's private jet. Emma inquired about the progress of Seol's alt character project to which he replied that he was still at the swamp. Seo wondered why Emma was interested in Archmage Streamer. Merlin entered the room and greeted them, referring to Seo as their muse. Seo and Merlin exchanged greetings, and then Merlin asked to borrow Emma for a personal favor. Seo agreed, allowing Merlin to speak with Emma. Merlin expressed his uneasiness about dealing with top members who are unaware of the behind-the-scenes activities. Emma advised against bringing up the matter with Seol. Merlin then mentioned the lack of news regarding Archmage Streamer accepting the request despite setting a significant bait. Emma informed Merlin about Park Youngjun from Rising Star, who seemed to have noticed something. Merlin acknowledged Park Youngjun's intelligence and cunning nature, she knew he was known for maximizing his profits and pushing opponents to their limits. Merlin shared that Park Youngjun had mentioned being in the middle of processing. Remarking on his cleverness, Emma speculated that Archmage Streamer might have uncovered their intentions, leading to the possibility of a traitor within their ranks. Despite the uncertainty, they could only wait for the forthcoming reply. Merlin inquired about the situation, and Emma mentioned that Archmage Streamer had initiated a live stream. 
Merlin expressed surprise that a live stream was being conducted without a response to their request. Emma surmised that the stream was likely related to the item posted on Bay. Hyunwoo greeted his viewers and announced that he will solo kill Ghost on the live stream which surprised Emma and Merlin. The people were engaged in a discussion about the item that Archmage Streamer had listed for auction. They speculated on the reasons behind his decision, considering whether he needed the money, was seeking attention, or aiming to attract potential sponsors. In the Mirage Forest, Hyunwoo was frustrated as the item he put up for auction isn't going up in price. He believed that he could fetch a significant amount of money for the item, so he spent all his funds on acquiring various items and skills. However, he knew that he required more firepower for the surprise show. The upcoming live broadcast is not just a regular boss monster raid. BJ Archmage standing and recognition are at stake, making this broadcast extremely crucial. Therefore, the significant investment made for this event is not considered a waste. Hyunwoo was confident in his ability to defeat the boss, Ghost. However, he encountered a problem with the cursed necklace, as it was not reacting and seemed confused by an unknown power in the Mirage Forest. Despite this setback, Hyunwoo was determined to proceed with the quest and defeat Ghost to make progress in the main storyline. Young Jun received a message from BJ Archmage regarding the upcoming live broadcast. The assistant speculated that it might be related to the Ghost Solo Kill Commission. Young Jun, however, believed that the terms of the commission were suspiciously favorable and suspected that BJ Archmage had other motives. Despite this, he couldn't help but be intrigued by what kind of show BJ Archmage had planned. Whether it was a ghost solo kill or not, Young Jun was eager to watch it unfold. Hyun Woo felt a bit nervous about the upcoming challenge, but the enthusiasm of Lucky and Gold reassured him. He began his live broadcast and Young Jun entered the chat, Hyunwoo informed him that he wanted to accept the commission. Hyunwoo confirmed the timeline of the commission, stating that he would start immediately. The live broadcast started, and Ghost, the boss monster, made its appearance. Viewers began to join the stream and were surprised to see the familiar spirit accompanying Hyunwoo. Even Young Jun was taken aback by this sight. Hyunwoo prepared his skills, and the familiar spirit also unleashed its own skill. The viewers were amazed by what they perceived as quadruple casting, some saw this as cheating. Hyunwoo unleashed his powerful skills, dealing significant damage, while Gold prevented the boss from getting too close and Lucky contributed with additional damage. The viewers understood that, at this phase, only physical attacks were effective. Hyunwoo knew that when Ghost transformed into its ghost form, it would pose a greater challenge. Hyunwoo noticed that Beagle was in the area near him, and knew he was an assassin of the Snake Hunting Guild. In the Abyss Guild, Emma couldn't help but wonder how much ahead BJ Archmage was compared to them. Despite knowing that the commission was a trap, he still accepted it confidently. Emma noticed that he was even proudly using the familiar spirit skill, which was the reward for completing the commission. Young June and Emma speculated that BJ Archmage's decision to reveal the familiar spirit skill and showcase his hunting abilities was a deliberate message. Emma believed that this message indicated that they would need to offer a higher price if they wanted to obtain the clue they were seeking. She realized that BJ Archmage might have already discovered their PK commission plan, causing their strategy to fail. With the aim of minimizing further damage, Emma concluded that they should halt their current course of action. Merlin expressed surprise at the decision to stop watching the live broadcast. Emma informed Merlin that their plan had been cancelled since BJ Archmage was already aware of their intentions. She instructed Merlin to inform the Hunting Snake Guild to also withdraw as their plan was no longer possible. Merlin asked about their next course of action, to which Emma stated that they needed to respond to the message they had received. Young June understood the message sent by BJ Archmage, which revealed that he was already aware of the trap and the client behind it. Young Jun acknowledged BJ Archmage as a formidable individual and believed that he was involved in a significant project beyond his imagination. He also interpreted that BJ Archmage had accepted him as an ally. Therefore, Young Jun concluded that there was no need to continue watching the live broadcast. He then told his team that their top priority should be to devise a plan to assist BJ Archmage. Beagle received instructions to refrain from attacking due to a new order. Despite the opportunity to take advantage of a significant level gap, 
Beagle expressed frustration at the decision. He planned to ambush the target during a specific phase of Ghost Spectre Dash ability. In the third phase of the battle, Ghost activated Spectre Dash, causing confusion among the viewers as Young Wu instructed Lucky and Gold to position themselves behind him. One viewer explained that Spectre Dash forces Ghost to attack the nearest enemy for 30 seconds, meaning Hyunwoo would have to endure attacks during that time. Seizing this opportunity, Beagle planned to attack Hyunwoo while he was focused on the boss, assuming that he would try to escape with Lucky and Gold while dealing damage from a distance. However, to Beagle's surprise, he and the boss were suddenly petrified by the Serpent Eye's skill. After the petrification ended, the boss turned its attention to Beagle, who was now the closest enemy. Some of the viewers noticed that the assassin, Beagle, belonged to the Hunting Snake Guild, while others mocked him for taking the damage meant for Hyunwoo. Ghost ended up killing Beagle. In response, Lucky used his skill to divert the boss's attention and used the unbreakable diamond skill to endure its attacks. Meanwhile, Hyunwoo equipped the Centaur Knight's Bow and activated the Double Arrow skill, unleashing a barrage of powerful attacks on Ghost. He then switched to an axe and intended to deliver the final blow, instructing Lucky not to attack. However, contrary to the order, Lucky still attacked and landed the last hit on the boss while Hyunwoo looked frustrated. Hyunwoo smiled, aware that the entire event was scripted, and felt satisfied with the outcome. Asmo donated one dollar and proposed a deal. If Hyunwoo answered his question, Asmo would bid on the staff that Hyunwoo had posted for auction. This piqued Hyunwoo's curiosity. Asmo then asked if Hyunwoo was currently engaged in the main scenario quest. The viewers were filled with curiosity as Hyunwoo confirmed that he was indeed undertaking the elusive main scenario quest. Young Jun, on the other hand, contemplated the significant implications of BJ Archmage discovering the existence of the quest. Unsure of how to best support him, Young Jun decided to focus on resolving the current situation first. Young Jun instructed Secretary Kim to proceed with placing Gamma Pharmaceuticals ads, despite initially rejecting the commission. Young Jun realized that BJ Archmage had completed the commission and believed that they should not sever their ties with Gamma Pharmaceuticals. He saw the importance of maintaining the relationship, even if they were trying to undermine the company. Young Jun believed that by doing well, they could potentially receive greater compensation and exploit the situation further drawing upon his knowledge from Wharton's school. Hyunwoo logged out of the game, feeling exhausted, and reflected on the events that transpired after defeating Ghost. He noticed that the cursed necklace started reacting, but he was careful not to reveal any clues to the viewers. He then proceeded to loot the items from Beagle and obtained a legendary weapon, Fire Snake's Fawn. Hyunwoo contemplated the situation, realizing that Beagle and the Hunting Snake Guild had made a determined effort to eliminate him. The activation of the cursed necklace meant he could continue with the main quest, but it also brought a new challenge. He anticipated being bombarded with questions about the main scenario quest, causing him a headache as he considered how to handle the ongoing interrogations. Hyukchu arrived and shared the news that BJ Archmage had revealed that he was engaged in the main scenario quest. Hyukchu was excited about the implications, believing that it would cause a significant impact in the game world. Curious about the outcome of his deal with Asmo, Hyunwoo checked the item he had put up for auction. Initially, he assumed that Asmo had made a low bid, but upon seeing Hyun was in different reaction, Hyukju informed him that Asmo had actually spent $100,000 for the answer. This amount, equivalent to 100 million won, surprised and shocked Hyunwoo. Hyunwoo returned home and brought food for his niece, Hyun, and his brother. His brother expressed concern about the amount of money being spent and questioned if Hyunwoo could afford it. Hyunwoo jokingly responded, assuring his brother that he didn't resort to selling his organs to buy food. However, Hyunwoo decided to be honest and revealed that he was involved in something important that put his life in danger. He mentioned a group called IMF, who were targeting the information he possessed, and jokingly referred to his partner as Ethan Hunt, whose real name is Tom Cruise. His brother, unimpressed with the joke, advised Hyunwoo not to overwork himself and to avoid recklessness. In his thoughts, Hyunwoo acknowledged the challenges he faced and the forces that were trying to interfere with him. He expressed his determination to destroy anyone who posed a threat to him, even if it meant facing the Hunting Snake Guild, 
one of the top guilds in God Wars. Emma was informed about the failure of the Hunting Snake Guild due to Beagle's actions. She expressed her frustration, having witnessed the events through the live broadcast. Emma criticized the guild for their incompetence, particularly noting that the Fire Snake's fawn was also taken. Realizing that they needed to pursue an alternative approach, Emma instructed Jackie to contact the Hunting Snake Guild again. Additionally, she inquired about the progress in identifying BJ Archmage's true identity. Jackie informed her that the only available information was that he was located in South Korea. Emma then instructed Jackie to contact Muse and tell her that they have an important instruction. Seal was at the store when she received a message from Jackie, prompting her to head home to see what it was about. As she was leaving, she noticed that Hyunwoo, whom she had met before, was also at the store. Seal contemplated whether to greet him first and decided to do so, recalling that he didn't seem like a bad person during their previous encounter. Noticing that Hyunwoo was watching a video clip of BJ Archmage on the Rising Star channel, he was surprised when Seol approached him. Recognizing her from their previous encounter, Hyunwoo apologized for not being aware of her presence due to being lost in thought. Seol reassured him that it was fine and expressed her apologies for his previous smartphone incident. Curious about Hyunwoo's interest in BJ Archmage, Seol asked if he was a fan. Hyunwoo replied that he wasn't, but acknowledged that BJ Archmage was popular these days. He revealed that he was also a God Wars user and worked on various tasks that earned money, likening it to being a miner. Seol expressed her admiration for his hard work, acknowledging the challenges of such a job. As they bid each other goodbye, Seol couldn't help but think that Hyunwoo was a hard-working individual. She hoped to be able to assist him in God Wars, even if it was in a small way. Hyunwoo continued his quest and successfully turned it into Natarsa the Exiled, which resulted in him leveling up. Natarsa introduced himself as a wandering ghost, once a guardian of the Wood Village who became exiled while desiring the power of the Nameless God. Curious about the Wood Village, which seemed larger than the cities he had encountered so far, Hyunwoo wondered about its significance. Natarsa explained that those who pursued the power of the Nameless God would eventually succumb to its influence and become ghosts. However, he noticed that Hyunwoo remained unaffected and inquired about the reason. Hyunwoo believed that it was due to the absorption of power by the egg he possessed. Intrigued, Natarsa acknowledged the existence of the egg and expressed his willingness to share more information if Hyunwoo could prove his worth. Hyunwoo received the main scenario quest from Natarsa, which required him to capture ghosts within a time limit of 10 minutes. He successfully completed the quest in an impressive time of 6 minutes and 42 seconds. Afterward, he returned to Natarsa, who revealed the true appearance of the forest they were in. Natarsa expressed that the forest was not meant to be a place inhabited only by slimes, indicating that it had been devastated and its true nature hidden. The identity of the one responsible for concealing the forest remained unknown, but Natarsa speculated that it could be the power of a god. Hyunwoo realized that this revelation was likely connected to the nameless god mentioned earlier in his journey. Natarsa entrusted Hyunwoo with a mission and gave him the Guardian's Glove, one of the legacies left behind by the Guardians. The mission was to gather evidence of Natarsa's past as a Guardian. With the Guardian Glove in hand, Hyunwoo was tasked with finding the administrator of the Wood Village and delivering Natarsa's message. In return for completing this task, Natarsa promised to reveal the identity of the mysterious egg to Hyunwoo. Natarsa then informed him that it was time for him to obtain his headband, and directed him to the Forest of Trolls where he would find his head. As Hyunwoo held the Guardian's glove, he also received a new main scenario quest. Hunting Snake Guild apologized for the incident involving Beagle. Emma expressed her dissatisfaction with Beagle's failure and disobedience, suggesting that the contract could be terminated. The fact that the guild's targeting of BJ Archmage was exposed has complicated their future plans. However, Emma decided to give the Hunt and Snake Guild an opportunity to make amends by notifying BJ Archmage of an upcoming attack. The guild was skeptical about BJ Archmage accepting the commission, but Emma assured them that she would provide a compensation that he couldn't refuse. She warned that this was Hunting Snake Guild's final chance to redeem themselves. Emma wondered if BJ Archmage would be able to survive a direct attack from the Hunting Snake Guild. 
Secretary Kim asked Young Jun about the resolution of the commission with Gamma Pharmaceuticals. Young Jun revealed that Gamma Pharmaceuticals made a new commission, asking for a scene where Hyung Woo succeeds in a boss monster raid during a surprise intrusion. Secretary Kim expressed concern about this, considering the existing enemies Hyung Woo has. However, Young Jun pointed out the enticing commission reward, a revolver skill card, highly sought after by mage class users. He believed that with this reward and the prospect of a live broadcast with confirmed break-in, BJ Archmage would likely accept the commission. Yunjin was taken aback when he received a video from BJ Archmage, but he was puzzled because it was yet another ghost solo kill video. However, their surprise grew when they noticed the length of the video. Like and subscribe if you want me to continue the next chapters and thank you for watching.